I want you to tell us who you are, where you live, and give us a little quick uh, introduction on who you are, who is your daddy, and okay. what do you do? All right. Y'all ready? Come on, Angela. I see you, Ted. Ted Stern. It is. I see you, Ed. No, I was just playing. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> so me and Ed is Ed. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to be cool. We got to be cool, me and Ed. Ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Okay, so anyway. I'm from, like, I'm from, like, the LBC. I'm, like, from Compton. Why do you look up like that? Stop. Why you look up? <laughs> Why you do it? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, Joey. I already know what you're going to do. You're going to firecracker on me. I'm not ready for all that noise with my PTSD. I am a country boy. Be honest. I'm from the Midwest. I'm from Oklahoma. Half of y'all ain't never, ever heard of Oklahoma. You failed naming all the states on the map when you was in school because Oklahoma is probably the least popular place that you've ever heard about. But I am from the haymaker state, that good old prairie with the wheat that smells so sweet. Oh, tell me about yeah. the hose. Tell me about the what? My hose. No, What'd you cow, say? The cows. Oh, sh can't talk about the, the hose. Because the hoes, I mean, what's the difference? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, the you cow, guys. The cows, the cows. Okay, the cows. Yes. Okay. No, what we, what we, where we're at was you were frustrated because you in what, where are you at? Where you, what, 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 what state you in and what city? Las Vegas, baby. Okay, so she's in Las Vegas, right, y'all? So she was actually complaining. Think about it. I have to sit here in my car and wait for all the people to walk by on the crosswalk. Yeah, that's not to get to work. <laughs> to get to because work, I've the because I've got to get to work. Across <laughs> the street. You have to sit there with crowds <laughs> and you're like, you're the light's already red. <laughs> I'm over here like, okay, so I'm I'm on a dirt road <laughs> in a Z71 <laughs> because I gotta wait for all these cows to walk by. <laughs> oh, I got to get to work. <laughs> I know, and I'm over here saying that I'm only two miles from from the strip. From my job, like sometimes, if you're at a light, you're you're stuck because there's crowds of people just trying to cross. So you have to give yourself like a half hour to get a five minute drive. You know <laughs> so, what? So that it, it's imaginary. It's imaginary because it's like I've never in my entire life seen that. Where I gotta actually wait for people to walk on the crosswalk and then and then just like the end of a turd you got that one last lady on the walker <laughs> and she's so slow yeah. <laughs> and, and the light turns red again it is red <laughs> i'm like lord help me be loving because i don't have energy for this and then i have to realize well, you know, it's just what it is. Sometimes it's not worth stressing about. Because <laughs> like seriously. Lord knows we do not need to turn. Let me let me tell you something. If you come up out the deck on Christmas box talking about your name as Joy, you don't want to see that uh, upset. If anybody's name is Joy from Jump Street, let's just keep it simple. Let's, let's just keep it Joy <laughs> and fun. You don't want the you you don't want to tick off Joy. I promise that. Well, I was, me. I was telling him earlier, you guys, um, that you know, because everybody has moments, and and you can always even me. Like I try to practice <laughs> positive, but there's moments when I'm just not inspired, and I'm tired and um, crabby or something. And my son will call me, and I'm, and he's trying to pull out of me inspired because he's really like my dad, and like like me too when I'm in a good state. 
but um, he wants to have these conversations. I was like, Sugar Bear, I can't do this right now. We're going to do it another time because I'm just not feeling it. Everybody goes through their moments of downtime, and usually it's because you haven't filled your own cup, and you just need a break, you know? I remember Oprah saying the other day, like, and I've only just started listening to her, but she was saying that somebody was telling her, well, I saw you at the airport, and you weren't hugging anyone. And she's like, who you see on TV is me. I get paid a lot of money to be myself. But... I'm not gonna always be hugging everybody when I'm just sitting in the airport. You know, like, I'm not just gonna go hug everybody. She goes, I'm just myself. And so sometimes you have to learn to not take those criticisms and judgments. You know what I mean? Sorry about the dog bag sounds. I'm trying to pull one. Joy, Joy, let me ask you, can I ask you something? Yeah. And, and, I, and, and I, I really I really don't, most, most of, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be real straight. Most of the people that right now is, is listening, uh, are, pro are are mostly people who know you personally, right? And and hopefully, hopefully it will be a commingling. Um, uh, what once, what once, once my platform is in, but I do want I do want to ask you a question though, Joy. Sure. Do Do you think that, um, when people become very successful, that that happens because god is just on their side or was it prior planning well when people are very successful first of all i have to say that i believe in a god and if you don't i respect that but if there is a god i guarantee you he loves all of his children um just like you my and my cousin has has a couple of kids my sister has four daughters um, and almost has a Walmart baby because she went to Walmart. Somebody asked when she was due and she's like, ah, and then it turns out girl, seven and a half months pregnant, just popped out another girl. Um, if you have, if you're one that's a parent and you have kids, you know, you love all your kids to death, but you might have one that you connect with more than the other. And, um, say I it ain't so say that really again, believe... Joy. say it louder. Jo say it one more time. You have what, what you say? Your favorite. You, you got Fat, you got fat, you, 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 ooh, I'm going to tell. No, you but, got a favorite. Come on. No, I, I only have you. one, but my point is, is that. Why I are you going to have a favorite? You got one. Because my God only created favorite. us in his image. <laughs> and those who give him love, he'll probably be more given more attention to. So the key in life is to be close to your creator, um, in yeah. my opinion, or to your inner being or your source learning how to get into your space of how, how, clarity how, in your mind, right? But, but, yeah, but how, how, Joy, come on now. How, how, it's just a question. How is your inner being even relevant to God? Like, is there a connection with that well, at it's, all? It's all, it's all on, each man has their own opportunity to discover that. And for me to tell someone else how they should believe, I can tell you what I've experienced and what I believe, but I have to say back to your first question first. Okay. Those who have success, whether you want to call it uh, the law of attraction, where, which means like attracts like, or you want to call it reaping and sowing, which is Christianese. <laughs> um, where you Christianese. <laughs> okay. Um, when the bottom line, like when I lost 200 pounds, it was discipline. And for some reason I found a way to do something long enough to make it a ritual and have success, but it's the same strategy in every category. Whether you want to have a successful career or a successful relationship or uh, a great body, you have to do the work. Mm. You have to just discipline yourself and 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 control your mind. Take take power over your thought and um, make a decision to do that thing over and over and over until your body, which like I was talking about earlier, grows it in and grows a tree and locks it into your long-term memory so it sticks. Otherwise, you'll never fully have a breakthrough in that area because otherwise you'll be like the yo-yo dieter who loses 50 pounds and gains 100 um, back and forth their whole life striving because they didn't do Man. what they were supposed to do long enough for it to stick in their brain physically what your body does. Um, right. the same in relationships. If a man or a woman cheats, it's because they did not have the discipline to control their thought 
and made a decision to do that. And you can only have strength in that area if you have discipline. Yeah, I know so that look. Singles, when you're out there, <laughs> when you're looking Dude. at a potential partner, hey, Ted. if they're disciplined or not. <laughs> you know? um, Ted, Ted said he been, a, 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 a Joy, real quick. Ted said he been he been uh, the Tulsa, uh, Oklahoma, going uh, to like Joplin, Missouri. He was coming down from Joplin, Missouri, and he stopped by um, Tulsa. That's what I see in the comment. And and I and and really all I see is really beautiful faces of women, and and I think Ted is the is, is the only guy. So it's like he's my he's my he's my life like my life raft. If I'm drowning, Ted, help me over here. I, I got I got I got joy all over my I got joy I got joy. I, I need some help. I need some help because because really because really everything Joy is saying is right, but we know there's a real under silver lining right there because of hey hey dudes hey dudes have my back have my back would y'all have my back. If, if, I was, if, if I was to say, <laughs> if I if I was to keep it real, like if I, <laughs> Joy, can you handle it? If I can keep anything real, hey, kick some knowledge like earlier, and you got it, a deal. Ha, that right. <laughs> uh, can I be Mister Convincing? Yes, yes, Mister. Okay, okay. So Get some knowledge. So, give us some. Give, so, give us some philosophies. Let's do it proper. Let's do it proper. Joy, would you would you be okay with um, leading us out with y your your opinion, and then give me just like maybe about one minute of space, <laughs> sure? and then and then and then and then I'm gonna do this for the dudes. How about that? Okay. okay. Is that okay? Hey, ladies. Hey, ladies. Every every lady that can hear under the sound of my voice. Just give a thumbs up if if you want to hear anything about dudes. <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm not seeing I'm not I'm not seeing nothing. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought thumbs up. <laughs> Who got a thumb up? Who that? <laughs> Vince Inc. <laughs> hey. Hey, Convince Inc. You Ted, said, oh, that's great, Ted. Did you hear what Ted It's nice to meet you. Ted, that's cool, bro. And, Dude, and, you just and tell, him, tell him what Khan means. Inc. Tell him what Khan means, remember? Well, I mean, if you speak Spanish, Khan means to be with or together with or connected to, with. And and then Vince, of course, it means to be to conquer. You know what I'm saying? So you, you, you're connected within yourself to be able to conquer. That's all it means. It's, it's that simple. Joy, let me let me let me give you a whole dissertation of what joy means. Let's see what a man thinks. Joy. We are, we we already know it's joy. Are they right? Is that now? Sing, much? sing us a song. Sing us a joy to the world song. This joy man to the world, all the boys and girls. Joy to the people. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> I'm walking my dog in the hood, y'all. Hey, you, you you wanna you wanna walk your dog in the hood? You know the people, <laughs> you know it's hood wet. Okay, here, answer the You know it's hood wet. What? How do you know it's hood? How, how I know it's hood? Yes. You know it's hood when you walk your dog. And and there's 100 pit bulls unleashed. Oh, shoot. Is that how it is? Well, it's I don't not know. Because I think it's a law. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's hood when... <laughs> there's a grocery cart with a driver. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know it's hood when you stop at the stop, stop sign. Somebody washes your windshield. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I'm, I'm corny. <laughs> mattress on the corner oh no <laughs> you're having a garage sale on your on your front porch <laughs> <laughs> if you could beat that sucker oh uh, you you know what's hood when somebody just spray painted they hubcaps to look like rims <laughs> i don't know 
<laughs> That's hilarious. But you know, you know, we can change it. We can say, you know, it's country win. <laughs> yeah, my sister would have joined this. So you guys, my sister Jamie and I are seven years apart. So when my dad told me at 16, God said to move to Washington, we moved to Spokane, Washington in the Valley. And it was Cowboy Central. And I was used to growing up in Southern California with hip hop. And I was the minority, right? And then we get there and I come home crying. There's no black people. And he oh, was only eight. That's when you know was hood. <laughs> my sister was like eight or nine years old. And she grew up there pretty much. When well, white girls cry because they can't see black people. That's how you know that was the hood. It's not the hood no more. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead with your story. It's Hickville. <laughs> it's Hickville. It, 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 I don't know what it is, but it ain't no more black people. <laughs> I'm just Except playing. Except Anthony, right? <laughs> you had one dude, it's like, man, nobody's home. <laughs> okay, so, okay, hey, continue, hey. continue, continue, continue. What's another thing you know it's country when? Oh, you know it's country when... Um, oh, I'm going to try to think of something. You know it's country when a guy stops in the bug and waggy and says, do you need some directions? No, I'm, I'm through. I'm through. I, I know, it's hard to think country, on the moment. Right? We might have to edit that country, one out. Country, <laughs> the country stuff is different because it, it, anything in, usually is about the same about the same thing every day. Really? I mean, eat chickens. And, you yeah. ever seen that movie, yeah. Son-in-Law with Polly Shore? No, I haven't. I haven't, I haven't what? Have I, oh, my God. That's, it's such an old 80s movie. I think maybe it's early 90s, 80s. I don't know, but he it's the funniest thing, watching him go home with his college friend to the country and have to kill a chicken. <laughs> it was just funny. I'm not going to go into all that. Anyway, well, anyway, we now we're trying to be comedians, I guess. But um, I guess we're trying to be really funny. But you know, well, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? We're we're about to we're about to do this um, this real deal, this thing. Have have you told have you told anybody about anything? Okay, so I just um, told him we had a conversation and decided we wanted to do talk and videos. So we just thought practice right now, and I said, oh, I can't make it private. Oh no, when he gets in here, he might be surprised. For for real people like 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 not for like people that's just on here trying to do something, but like for like real actual people with real emotions. Um, um, I mean, besides all the the funny crap, but like real issues, you know what I'm saying? And from different cultures of people, and 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 this could be, and honestly, honestly, this could be a place where there are questions that white people do not truly, they think they know, but they don't truly understand what black people feel and think about, honestly. About all that, but sure, why not? I mean, why not? Like, it's gotta be like, I mean, cause we follow like what, what, what they call them, stigmas and stereotypes. But behind the stigma and behind the stereotype, if you wanted to say, hey, man, I got, everybody wants it. I got one black friend. Everybody in the country got one black friend. It's probably me. I mean, I got a lot of friends. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I'm the only black dude. It's like, hey, I got one black friend. Guess what? It's Mr. Convincing. Everybody is friends with me. But I if you, up, by the way, you, I'm really convinced. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you really, 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 like, you got to be interested, though. Like, if you really, really, really have an issue and you want to put in the comments, what do, so you, you did the thing about, you know, you country win. Okay, I, I'm doing a thing like, what do you really want to know what a black man thinks? You know about, what, you guys, I, what? Like, I like that. I like that he's saying it that way. So I was raised on the West Coast in, in a, and where I was more of the minority in Southern California. And, um, and he was raised in Oklahoma and it's a completely different upbringing. But today in our conversations, we found a lot of um, 
a lot of uh, resonance with each other and we've both gone through our struggles and I don't always think of the difference in with ethnicities, but there are a lot of people out there who do and how powerful it is, is it when there's no judgment and um, no, nothing condescending where people can be real and give opinions and talk about um, things. Yeah. They have. And I just remember. And, and you, go, go, ahead. Ahead. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I remember being singled out in high school once that I have a, had a group of girlfriends and I was the only white girl. And I remember them going, those stupid white girls always blah, 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 blah. And, oh, but not you, Joy, you're cool. And I, I, that sticks out in my mind because I, and, and it's okay because we're teenagers and when you're teens, you know, the, you know how that is. But I think that there's something powerful about embracing humanity as a whole and realizing um, that it's just the unfamiliarity that causes you to feel like something so alien or foreign. Like, before I had my one of my best friends who's Filipino, I didn't know much about Filipino, so I didn't know the difference between Filipino and Chinese or or Japanese, because I was unfamiliar, ignorant. Un, like ignorant can be a negative term, but ignorance also means just unaware and not educated. And once I made friends with her, and went to her house many times and understood the culture and recognized, I can I can tell who's Filipino versus you know japanese or whatever and i think a lot of times people are only afraid of what's not familiar if that makes any sense and i don't want this to be a racial type talk no 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 but no it's no. just powerful to embrace the differences whether it be male or female or black or white or mexican or indian and and recently i've sang with someone who's from india and he's got the most beautiful soulful voice and i connected yep. with him because i'm so unfamiliar um I feel like it, it just kind of bridged that gap and made my, made me more familiar. And we're really good friends now. We sing together all the time. And I think that's what's so beautiful about this time we've had with pandemic is I was able to get online and have a, a community on there and, and meet people who are from all over the world and gain best friends. I could go into many countries right now and have a place to stay. And um, I think the goal is to learn how to embrace and love even when it doesn't look like we should and when there's fear involved. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay, go ahead. Finish what you're saying. Sorry. No, you. it's okay, Joy. You all right. You already know. Oh, I was so waiting on you to pull that cigarette out. Jeez. Yeah, he said, can we smoke and drink? And I go, hey, it's reality. Mm -hmm. And when I we click smoke, wait. we can just tell our audience to be our, uh, <laughs> our uh, what do you call it, our accountability partners. Because, I, I mean, I'm not going to look 29 forever. Do I look 29? Well, you're not going to look 29 forever. 44. See, I'm, pre I'm pretty, I'm pretty trained. Uh, you gonna just tell them what you are? See, Do we look like old? Okay, you guys, look, sometimes I think I look young. Well, people tell me that, but you know how many times you've told somebody you look young? You look good for your age, even just being nice. Sometimes it's perspective, like he's 45, I'm 44, and I feel like we look so good for our ages, but you, maybe, you ever, maybe we really don't, we just think we do. <laughs> you, uh, you ever, you ever had a guy in his 20s try to hit on you? But guys, come on. Guys are hey. <laughs> guys you do not look me. like a freaking MILF at all. I don't. Period. No. Thank you you can never pass. You'll never pass as a MILF. Never. Ever. I look authentically young. <laughs> <laughs> authentically young. You know what? This conversation. Is like totally not planned. I mean, we can bomb this right now. But guess what? Chicken butt. Okay. That, that's, yeah. Yeah. But you know what, though? For real, for real, for real. We cannot assume the way I feel and the way you feel about topics are universal uh, within any community groups. Because even within the, what we call black, African-American or whatever, even in, in, in that group of people, we don't all think alike. Mm. Arsenio Hall said, things that make you say, mm. no, we don't all think alike either. We can't be put in a box. Also, all white people don't think alike. Mm-mm. I tried to add Alex to us. Let's see if he accepts. I don't who's, know if you can do it. I've never tried it. I don't know. I've never tried it. You said Alex? Yeah, that way we can have a Spanish voice. 
Who's who? Oh. And you can have another guy. Oh, I can have another guy. Oh, that kind of sounds. It works. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> see how see see how she started this. Like I can have another guy. <laughs> black, you know white, what? Puerto, boys, 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 boys. Black, white, Puerto Rican boys. Watch out of here. I'm, yeah. You guys, What's hey, up, who Alex? Just, who was I just quoting? What's going on? Was, you guys were. Hey, who no, was I just I'm, quoting? You guys this... Pop quiz. Huh? Who was I just quoting? Boys, boys, all kinds of boys. Black, white, yellow, Puerto Rican boys. Who is that? Oh. I have no oh. idea. Missy I've Alex. heard it. <laughs> Missy. Missy. Oh, okay. With the, with the jersey on, heavy set girl, me do do do. She get it. Do, mm. You know what I'm saying? P Diddy. Uh, hey, that's a black thing. Sorry, y'all. That's just a black thing. Okay, so why don't you? Why <laughs> don't you sorry. What, hey, I'm just playing. Introduce my friends, can I introduce um Alex to the to the live? Come on, come on with it. Alex, Hello. Alex, I would like you to meet Empire Cat One from Smule, and um. And and Vince, Vince, Mr. Convincing, aka Vincent, um, who is mm -hmm. not your average catfish, <laughs> um, was tag named. I'll give myself catfish. away. This is this is Alex, who goes by. Oh shoot, Alex LV. Oh, Alex. <laughs> oh, you mean that? <laughs> Why black people gotta have nicknames? I don't understand. <laughs> If your name is Alex, your name is Alex. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> well, my name's Alejandro, but I go by Alex. Okay, so he got a nickname. <laughs> no, it's a Mexican. It's a Mexican thing. Okay. Oh. oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we need you to talk with that. I want to hear. Guess what? I'm gonna be real straight with you. Mm. Since hey, I don't mean to. I don't mean to like, you know. What you call that? Sidetrack Joy, because this is her show. But man, I'm so curious, bro. I'm curious. Because uh. look at me. I'm a melanated brother. Probably the most mel. I, I ain't the most melanated because it's a real black, black brothers. And, and But I'm melanated. And we always uh. assume, I'm going to just tell you straight. I mean, this is a reality uh. thing. We always assume that the Mexicans. Mm hmm are our brothers. They are, I hear you. They are for us. If, if we get in trouble, call a Mexican brother, man. But you know what's so funny? Because I, I was hearing you guys' conversation. It's pretty interesting because when you guys were talking about the whole like topic with, you know, with being black and white and, and then you throw a Mexican in the mix right now, right? So <laughs> where I grew up, it, you know what's crazy is that where I grew up, you know, it was so much of a rival between black and Mexican, which is so crazy to me, you know? Really? And there, yeah, and the minority was kind of like what Joy, like minorities were, were Caucasian people or white people. I mean, it was crazy. Joy, like 3%. a real. Where did you grow up, and, Alex? You know, where did you grow up? Um, I was in, um, I went to school in Ontario and then Pomona when I was in like elementary. Um, and when I was in Pomona, it was predominantly in my middle school was like a lot of, like a lot of black and Latinos. Like it was a lot, you know, and a mix, you know, and some of them got along and many of them didn't. There was a couple of riots that I remember really well. Um, but isn't it, it's just crazy because I, if you ever notice whenever you travel, if you travel <laughs> like outside the country, right? And you meet someone in Las Vegas, no matter what race you are, they're like, "Oh, you're from Las Vegas." Oh, but the closer you, the closer you get to where you're actually at, it becomes more like people just separate themselves, and it's it's such a constant battle because you know, regardless, like there's always going that like it's just never gonna go away. Like that's never, unfortunately. As much as we want it to go away, it's just not, and like you guys mentioned, it's just being like ignorant, you know, like not knowing, huh? Sorry, that was my younger brother, but yeah, it's in the door right there. Um, you know, and like, we're just, we're, it's not, it's the unknowing. 
because I've met so many people ever since I moved here, especially where I work. And you know, Joy, where I work, I mean, we get a lot of like bougie, bougie, and oh, this and no, that kind of, you know. And but, but, a lot of, seriously, the Down syndrome. A lot body. of the, a lot of those people are are unfortunately very clueless and don't know. You know, don't understand the background, don't understand anyone else but themselves. Oh. And when you start to open up your mind more, you know, you really see like, you know, not only we're so different, but in, in so many ways, we're so the same without even, you know, when you just put it all together in this huge melting pot of all different nationalities and cultures and ways of life and ways of acting and being and whatever, like, like we learn what we're around and then at the same time like if you open up the spectrum of it all in the end of the day like we're we really are all the same we just we we just constantly fight over what we feel is correct and what we feel is right yeah because it's what we you know yes and and i mean i'm i'm a huge you know i believe in the lord you know and at the end of the day i'm about just following what he wants me to do and not really focusing on what other people want me to be like or act like or like that's you know and that's just oh, and that's, wow. that's, yeah. you know that's my belief there and and i i will preach it till the day i die but you know at the end of the day we really are like all the same it's just we're so different minded and that's okay but we can learn from each other without judging each other. And that's, that's really what it boils down to is learn from each other without judging each other. You know, this is so powerful, you know? because I feel like conversations like this can can be the bridge to help people see the mm -hmm. similarities and how we all have struggles. Like earlier, Vincent, you were saying, you know, it's so powerful to hear what you're saying, because we both have had our struggles in the same way. It's almost like a completely different. It's like a mirrored experience in a sense. Um, but just in a different and a different frame. It's like we have space suits, you know, we're here in a space suit. And but the truth mm -hmm. is, is we're all if you really believe that there's eternity and we're all here eternally, whether you want to call it Jesus or Allah or whatever, I believe, I believe in Jesus. And I also believe in our source. And I don't believe you have to do anything to deserve um, salvation or love. You don't have to do anything to be accepted. You just have to be authentically who you are. And and work on yourself but unfortunately we're in a world where there's a lot of conflict and there's a lot of fear especially with when it comes down to things like 9 11 and when it comes down to the pandemic and all the political debating and all of that yeah. conflict people are just focusing on the news and then they're afraid and they don't know anybody personally in that ethnicity so it becomes right. scary and it's easy to cluster people into a category I was actually at the dog park last night talking to this man who's in his 80s who's gone to that same dog park for 20 years. And he's not by any means racist, um, by any means. He, there's a difference between ignorance and um, hateful. Um, he was saying it's really sad that this, unfortunately, I hate to say it, but the African-American community, there's just so much crime and this and that. And I said to him, I said, you know, I know that there's a lot of crime in that ethnicity but you you also have to be careful about clustering people into a category because I have a girlfriend who lives next door to me who's an African American lady who has was raised by great parents who are um, have high high um, titles in their careers and 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 she was raised she went to college and she's about self development and she would not hurt a fly and she is African American. Um, but it doesn't mean that she's a criminal because that's her ethnicity. And it, it, she was not a slave in her generation or even a few generations prior to her. So she's not blameful or vindictive towards white people at all because she's wise enough and knows enough to know that it wasn't me that was a slave owner. I didn't even know the people who were. I'm a different spirit altogether just because my skin is white doesn't mean that I'm part of that crew. And so I think a lot mm -hmm. of times people... Uh, when they're unfamiliar, there's fear and they um, aren't certain. And I think it's beautiful when you can get people together of different ethnicities and, and have a conversation with no hate and no judgment and love and, and, and not trying to prove a point, but just being loving and, and seeking to understand instead of trying to um, 
act condescending and, and look down on people, you know? You know what, Joy? I I really I I really admire your your processing. You know what I'm saying? Cause just from my neck of the woods, where I'm from, and I can't speak for all I cannot speak for all blacks because even me, if I went like I say, if I went over to the, the West Coast where where other Crips and whatever, I don't know what's over there. I just see it on TV. You know what I'm saying? Just like I see Bruce Lee on TV. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Every every Asian guy knows karate. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it it's it's the stigma. And and if I go to the South, you know, with Lil Wayne and Boosie, <laughs> Lil Boosie or you know what I'm saying? I don't fit in even being black. If if I'm a black dude and I walk in, they say some uh uh what you call uh some slang or something. I'd be like, oh, okay. I don't, I don't know that slang, mm-hmm. but it's, it's with it, even within the black community, there's a lot of diversity, and to be able to hear from a white woman um, what you really feel and what you, how you really think, it changes a lot, man. Because it changes a lot of how you think about people. Because imagine, you know. I'm not trying to be funny, but when you first went to school in kindergarten, I don't know if anybody else did this, but my first day, I was so nervous, I peed on myself. I did in high school, and I don't tell that story later. <laughs> Imagine walking around, you try to untuck your shirt, try to cover it up. <laughs> that's, how it, that's how it feels to be black as a child in an all-white school. It's like, mm-hmm. you're that guy, you know, everybody's looking at you like, I've never seen, can I touch your hair? You know, just like mm-hmm. that kind of thing. But then what you do is to close off because you're like, man, I, I don't need all this attention. But mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's so encouraging to be able to hear a white lady speak her mind from where she really is. <laughs> I'm not Karen. My Aunt Karen is. <laughs> Karen. <laughs> Karen walks a dog at the dog park. <laughs> and I have a dog stroller, too. <laughs> and, it, and Karen has a dog. And I got it from Aunt Karen. <laughs> My Aunt Karen is an angel. She's not racist whatsoever. <laughs> Alex, do you have a dog stroller? <laughs> Hey, she gave it to me, and I'm like, this is kind of nice. I don't have to worry about my dog. I put her in the stroller. She's a sniffer dog. You heard that comedian talk about you don't want to try to exercise with a sniffer dog because you'll be trying to run, and they're like, on every little – my dog is a sniffer dog. I'm like, I could walk all day long, and it'll, I'll probably get a block because she just you know, sniffs everything. Working, little Molly. working out with a sniffer dog is not cool. <laughs> you know um, – <laughs> <laughs> you... <laughs> You're so funny, <laughs> Alex. I wanted I wanted to go back to um, when <laughs> Joy was talking about um, uh, being like predominant. Like, what were you saying about? Oh my gosh, you made me laugh, and I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay. Um, Bullet points. But what I was okay. What I was going to tell you was, you know, when I was about, about I want to say about four, four years old, and I remember this still, which is crazy because my memory is so vivid. My mom and I, we were um, mugged by a black person um, back in California, like in Pasadena area, and um, and it was traumatizing. I mean, it really like it was the middle of the night, and it like it scared the the living daylights out of me. I remember to the T pushed my mom, took her purse. And I mean, it was a crazy experience, you know, but it's also my mom's as a parent, my mom's job to make sure that it doesn't make me think that all people are like that of color, you know, that are black, that they're all because like, they're not. And, and, at the end of the day, like my, I was raised to never judge anyone, period. And I never was that way growing up. I never, some people look at it like, oh my gosh, like, 
you know, they all do that or they do this or Mexicans do this or white people are all into the, and they, we slowly as we're kids get into those categories, we start thinking that way and we process things that way. And, and at the end of the day, like it really, like we start to develop that, that part of us where like, as soon as you look at someone, it's like you right away, put them in a category without even knowing them. Wow. Not even knowing, like you look at a, a shirt or a sweater or a hat or shoes and then, you know, and their color and where do you think they're, and then you right away, you start to think you put this whole like picture image of what you think you're coming across. Right. And you know, it's crazy because how many times just in like, for example, in the retail environment that we have someone walking and looking like a bum and they drop in, you know, three G's. Right. I mean, you never enjoy those that. I mean, you know, being in the high end retail side of things, you just learn never to judge because you don't know. No. Like you really don't know. And that's why just in the real world, like you don't know. And you, you know, like Martin Luther King always said, by the content of your character, character. period. And character. Joyce Amen. Earlier, Joyce said, character. You get, you get character from your struggles, like working it out, pushing it through. You get tired and you got to go get that last squat or that last bench press that builds character. Mm. And, it, and yes. oh my yes. goodness. And when you said that, you <laughs> know, like the, 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 the number one thing to any business plan the number one key mm-hmm. to any plan is marketing. And because mm-hmm. you have a business if you don't have proper marketing, right? But I know the number one thing to any marketing and any sales, you can't cherry pick. You, I mean, you like you said, you never know. Uh, somebody can walk in and, and stroke a check, man. They don't need five. Mm-hmm. And you'd be yeah. like, and then you'd be like, well, how, no, you, you must, that's dope money. Or uh, you must have robbed the bank. Right. Or uh, something's wrong with oh, you. Oh, okay, listen, keep keep that in mind. Okay, funny you brought that up. Listen to this. I went to I went to Lindo Michoacan. You know that restaurant, right, Joy? Which one? Lindo Michoacan. Lindo Michoacan, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Mexican restaurant. Okay, get this. So I saw, and keeping the, to your thought, my friend. So there was this table mm-hmm. with like, I mean, it was all Mexican people, like in this one table. And I hear them all like, they're all dressed up in fine clothes and blah, blah, blah. And they're yapping like the telenovela kind of yapping, you know, to each other. And you know what? My own, my own culture, you know what I thought? And I was, I was wrong in this, but I was literally starting to judge even my own people. I saw, I thought in my head, I go, they got that kind of money. They must be narking it. I wonder what the, you know. I was, I was literally. <laughs> I was judging my own people. I was like, uh, uh-uh, uh. I know they don't got. I know they don't got that kind of money. They must be doing something on the side. Alex, Alex, why is it? Why do you think that people do that? Like, what is the what is the the source of that? Like, why do people do that? Well, think. Well, you know what. What's good? This is, you know what? This is what's crazy because it's my own, like my own, like I'm judging my own Mexicans. I'm like, oh wow, y'all are doing something you ain't supposed to be doing. Like, I don't. You know what? I, I really think it's, like, really when you. It's you know it could be media, it could be, social platforms that you see out there. It could be like, watching too much Netflix. Mr. El Chapo. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm, <laughs> bro. <laughs> listen, I'm being real. I'm being honest. I'm being honest. You know, he's, you know, just, he's being so real. Can I, can I insert one thing? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> my, my dad, hardworking man, ain't never been a thug. Tired of this paper. You know, cheap doesn't buy expensive things. You know, before when when he was living, and first thing he ever bought for himself because he could afford it is a when the Nissan Altima, 
first came out. Oh, oh, yeah, those yeah. were the shit. That was that was the ride. Yeah, that was a gorgeous car. It, it was like everyone wanted that car, and it was mm -hmm. on the highway. You know what I mean? Right. It mm -hmm. had a mm -hmm. cell phone dash holder or something on the dash before cell phone mm -hmm. even the thing. And he was mm -hmm. proud of it. He had a nice sound system. So proud of it. So you know that song, Move It On Up? Okay. <laughs> yep, yeah, yep. totally. Of course. So, so we felt like I was in the car. I was like, man, we moved up, Betty. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got that old car, mm -hmm. you know? So we feeling good, right? Mm -hmm. It's time. It, mm -hmm. hey, Daddy, it's time for oil change. Come over here mm -hmm. to Third Street on the east side with the black people. And get your oil change. It's cheaper because you cheap, right? You want to save some money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excuse my French. This is what my daddy said. Ain't no nigga touching my car. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> I'm looking at him like, what? What? Mm -hmm. He was like, look, I'm going to take my car to the white man. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to. He said, I'm going to get warranty and guarantee. Hey, no <laughs> shade tree mechanic, oily head negro going underneath mm. a new car. So wow. it kind of goes along. I think that might have something to do with every culture. I don't know, Joey, what, do you have anything that you can remember that it was kind of racial against your own people? Well. Hmm. It, it's not so much against my own people because I've been in such a diverse thing, but I do know over here in the mall and there's all those Israelis that have those kiosks and mm -hmm. they're really good salespeople and they bullshit people all the time. And those people come to our counters and talk about the bullshit. And we know the stereotype of those Israelis, they are hustling people. And, um, yeah. but, but then I have a friend that is, is Israeli and they're beautiful and they're, she's a beautiful person and she's not um, at all deceptive. Um, and she was my first experience other than those kiosk guys of the, that ethnicity and that, that background to give me um, a view of the realness and humanity of that, of that culture. And I think in every culture, mm -hmm. you're gonna have the low class and the high class, the deceitful and the honest. And I think overall, the ones that stand out the most are the ones that are the loudest or that make the biggest impact and or do the biggest wildest things and unfortunately the news and and all of the the things that we see are the most negative aspects of a culture and that's why when 9-11 happened and anybody who wears a hair turban is a suspect all of a sudden when there's plenty of beautiful loving people who are muslim who um who who would never hurt a fly and and i do you know i've had people argue that the what kind of bird is out at this time of night that's crazy maybe it's an owl Vegas, oh my God. Mm -hmm. um, thank God it's only 45 instead of 39 and there's no wind. Thank you, Jesus. Um, but, but I think overall in general, as a human being who wants to expand and be the best you can be, um, the best you can be is learning to, to not judge, but love. And if you're uncertain, just step away from it for a minute until you can get certainty um, instead of being hateful or, 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 or fearful and rude and i think overall if you can just understand that everybody bleeds red and um and and realize that it's the ignorant until you have that personal encounter with somebody of a different race that you've not encountered um and you've experienced the eye-opening um moment where you realize that they're just like you um i don't think yeah. it's easy to grasp this until you get to that place but i would encourage everybody to um really work on being overall in general practicing love and it doesn't mean you necessarily have to be best friends and hang out with with these with people you're not familiar with but it's being open to understanding and and having common courtesy and love in general and um even with people who offend you and if there is somebody that's hurt you it's letting go of that conflict and not allowing it to to tear you up inside to become you know to where you become a hateful person in general, because any offense that you hold inside of you causes conflict internally, and, and they've proven it scientifically, um, that when you hold on to bitterness and anger, that your your brain actually produces hormones that cause you to get sick. 
Joy yeah. no stuff, bro. <laughs> and it's a beautiful thing when you can recognize the power of love in general, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's conditional. I mean, conditioning. Well, like, and it what, expands what your is, experiences in life. There's, you know, you'll eat Chinese food, but yet you're you're racist. Like, come on, if you're right, gonna eat the food. Right. At least appreciate the food as a first step. You know, what I'm saying? if you love Mexican food, then why don't you start appreciating the fact that there's Mexicans on the planet, and, right. and understand that not every Mexican is a bato in a lowrider trying to shoot your um shoot down the neighborhood. That's just what one if, particular pack. Joey, what if it's the idea that if if I were to open myself to people and culture that are not like my own, then we might get overran. We might get we might be vulnerable, you know. Um, because I, I thought about it. I thought like you know the idea to resolve like what we call racism or if it if if even if it's a real thing but like the yeah. idea to try to resolve it and everything why do we have to feel like it means that we all have to be the same like, come that on would man be boring how boring would it be if everybody the same? and another thing is how boring would your life be if you it's never had problems you don't want no barbecue, Alex. You ain't to, what is it? You ain't, Alex, you ain't trying to get some fried chicken? What? No, sir. I'm doing the Mexican thing and washing dishes <laughs> by hand. <laughs> you ain't trying. Alex, hey, hey Alex. If there, is, if there is no such thing, if there is no such thing as a Filipino, I would definitely try to invent that little uh, egg roll looking shit. Uh, would you please tell us what that is, Mars? Because I it spaced my brain. Oh, it's a... um. Dang it, girl! I know what this is, and I can't even think about it. What's the little Filipino egg roll thing? Like, what's that called again? Oh, you mean the lumpia? Lumpia! Oh, lumpia! Oh. I remember I went to my friend Bernadette's house. Okay, lumpia. Filipino girl. I worked with her with Dior for me many years, and I get to the house, and her mom lives with her and her husband. Her husband was uh, mixed with black and white. They had the most beautiful kids. Um. And her mom lived with them because in the culture of families kind of lived together even, you know, later. Um, and there was a fish on the table with its eyes open and something in its mouth. Oh. And I'm like, I'm not eating that. But it's just funny because I got exposed to lumpia and I loved it. And um, oh. when I met Bernadette, I, I mean, when I met Mars Cross Maria, I automatically loved her just because she's Filipino and I love lumpia. <laughs> but I obviously couldn't, didn't love it enough to remember the name of it. You know what, Joy? I'll be real straight. We different cultures are actually not that different because if you, mm -hmm. if you the recipes, what's a white uh, people recipe? Can I think of a white person recipe? What is it? Apple pie? To be, I, I mean, if you look at like how to make something, like let's just let's just let's just say a hog, a, a pig, a sow, or whatever. A sow, right? Every what do you call your fat friend? What do you call your fat friend? A, a hog, a sow, or a cow, or a pig? <laughs> Every culture. That's what we call men. That's what us females a call swine. men when they're jerks because they're a sow. No, they're most, a pig. Most all cultures will eat everything on that pig. And and, and I've learned something because I grew up the whole time thinking that only black people eat what we call chitlins. That's that's pig that's pig I and Chitlins. But I'm I sorry. That's Mexican. the white in me, maybe, but I ain't doing it. My homeboy, my homeboy said he was in um, San Diego and he had a, a Mexican girlfriend and, you know, he would sit up with um, her father and he learned a whole lot. And he said, he said, hey, Vince, you got to get you some, we call it Maduro, Maduro. Or Maduro. Menudo. Menudo. He said, man, you think Chitlins is good? But look at that. Whatever he said, I can't say it. <laughs> but it's, it's just different. It's different seasonings, but it's the same intestine. So how? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just what different. Like, Alex, what's the most controversial controversial food in the in the in the uh, Latino culture? Well, I was gonna tell you guys this. Like, isn't it so crazy? Like. We live in the one country in the world where 
probably every food to existence is on this country. And yet it's like one of the most, like we deal with so much like racism and separation, but yet we have so many like, and here's what's so crazy to me. Like who the heck wanted to make a burrito and call it a wrap? What is your problem? <laughs> My first Mexican joke. Is that a white boy thing? Is that a white person like, thing? Like, that is just not even normal. <laughs> like, you want to, like, you know, a burrito, you know, the burrito, the Mexican burrito was supposed to be, like, $1.99, you know, two ninety nine at most. But now they decided to, to, to make organic ingredients, you know, throw it together in a flour tortilla, <laughs> add some lettuce and some good turkey, and then you want to call it a wrap in charge, nine ninety nine. How disrespectful. I I can't, you know, if I was if I was Mexican, if I'm I promise you, Joy, if I can just imagine if I'm Mexican, right? And they took my food, <laughs> mm. my culture. Mm. And, and put a couple of pieces of lettuce in it. <laughs> Welcome to the world of ideas because everybody does it. It's all those fake, you know, those imitation versions, like those knockoff versions. That's uh -huh. what it is, is people take an idea and then recreate it into something new and charge a million dollars. We have we, are, we have a Mexican yes. population here in Oklahoma City, man. Like what about like, the guru, the gyros or the heroes? Heroes or gyro? What is oh, it? the euro, the euro, euro, euro. Yeah, the euros. What is so, that again? Yeah, and which, what is that and those are like those are even more. Those are like fifteen bucks for one. Like, what is wrong with these people? Is that lamb? What is what kind of? Yes, it's lamb. Usually, it's lamb. Yes. What oh. is that mm -hmm. culture? I don't even know where that comes from. Greek. Um, that's like. Um, that's yeah, so Greek, so that could be Sorry, like guys, um, I didn't know. Moroccan. I'm ignorant. I'm ignorant. I mean, it's, it's all you know, it's all are in the Mediterranean Greece, area. Are so. Greeks considered Caucasian? You know, okay, so that's the other thing I was going to bring up to you guys. Like, what makes like who decided to slap the word white on a white person because it's so plain, Jane, when it's like white can be so many different things. Yeah. It could be German, Irish, Scottish, Norwegian. Swedish. I mean, there's so much. There's so then, many different you know, types of blacks too. You were saying that earlier, Vincent. Yeah. That there's so many different cultures in the black culture. If you yeah. in Africa in Africa, you can be like let's just say if you were in Cameroon, right? You could walk. Mm -hmm. You're like well one mile from your village, your area mm -hmm. and you have a completely different language that's not even documented like right i mean it's it's just like you can't even understand each other that's how mm -hmm. and we're all black right right we're supposed to be brothers no it's not like that it, it, you know what i'm saying yeah it's the same. And you know what? I can imagine. I don't know for a fact, but I'm only imagining. There's probably certain places in Mexico that you know you can't go because yeah. you're not of that, you know, creed or whatever. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. might, oh, I, might I get it. Dangerous. Might be dangerous. I wouldn't. Wa I wouldn't walk like by myself or. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure. Like if you go to. Like if you go to Ireland or um, you know wherever in Europe, I'm not thinking that everybody's all polite with each other. Mm -hmm. It's just human nature, you know. So why yeah. why is the color any different than that? Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, sometimes I really, I sometimes I truly, honestly wish that we like we're not able to see what color we were because just by hearing you speak and the way you talk to me and I talk to you should be enough to understand if we have a respect for each other without already seeing your color or right you know like it's and that's what's really unfortunate that right away when we see that it's like we already put a like right away like you 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 paint your own picture of what you think you're being approached or, or you're approaching you know and hey bro some people like the Yankees. Mm. Some people like Boston. Some people, 
I mean, you, we have different teams. We represent where we're from, our state, our city. You know. Yeah. And then, and then after we go and cheer them on, and whoever wins or loses or whatever, on that team, there's black people, there's white people, there's people from all kind of cultures. That's our jerseys. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And if you talk too much, maybe outside there could be a riot. It, it, so it's it's really fighting for what a team. So it, there is something deeper. You know what? You're right. It's it's something deeper that is self inflicted of whatever either they've been through or seen or traumatized from something. Because at the end of the day, I'm like, where does all this anger, like? like fighting to kill like come from at the end of the day like really over a color like that's a little crazy you know you're willing to fight over your color but you don't even visit your grandmother amen right Mm -hmm. you're you're really you you're willing to die for your color but you haven't done anything for your community at all Mm-hmm. What is this need to? Is it a survival? Is it primitive? Is it like a survival? Is it the animal part of us that says, "Hey, my kind has to survive. We don't care nothing about your kind," it, it, you know? But we're not even in that. Like we're all going to eat this crap. I don't care. You, I love Mexican food. And you ain't gonna stop me from getting me a good ass b- b- taco for the real taco. I ain't talking about no Taco Bell neither. I love <laughs> it. You hear me? And 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 my dinner too. <laughs> and I put some. And it's crazy. I put Asian sauce on it. I put sriracha on <laughs> a taco. That's interracial. Then that's all wrong. So why is it wrong? It tastes <laughs> like a little bit of fusion there. That's, that's awesome. I think it's a beautiful Use interaction. It it's wonderful, man. Uh-huh. Guess what? Guess check it out. I'm a dude. I'm dude. I'm dude. I'm dude all the way. And to me, when it comes to women, I don't know about you, Alex, but for me, when it comes to women, <laughs> bro, if he only knew Joy Joy, bro, look, I put it like this. I put it like this. If I was blind. I'll be like Ray Charles feeling on. Oh, uh, she better have a butt job. <laughs> I feel on wrist. You can't feel color. No. Your woman's woman's a woman's a woman. It don't matter to me. <laughs> They're all emotional. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Have you ever made? Have you ever met a racist gay person? That's a whole other subject. Yeah, you can, know, and that's another thing we were talking about yeah. earlier is. You know, like I'm going to chime in on this because, um, you know, I really believe that before we come to this planet and we become, in, we're in this physical reality, we're not male nor female. I mean, we go back to spirit, right? Like, and all the religions believe that in general is that when we're in spirit, we're in spirit. <clears throat> and so this is a whole nother t- can of worms. <clears throat> and um, And I believe that regardless of their sexual orientation, they're still, um, this might be another, another topic for another episode. <laughs> this, is, this is a big topic. Let's, let's, let's plan, plan to reconvene on this particular topic tomorrow night at 8 p.m. <laughs> That's going right. to be a big one. You but think, I, you think racism I, I think it'll be very topic? enlightening. Ooh, that's, to get that, me on that's religious a good one. That's views a good one. and, and um, biases and to really understand the dynamics, that's a whole nother controversial topic that can be a beautiful. Yeah, you know it's real crazy. This is what's real crazy. Get caught on the internet uh, saying the word G A Y. You get well, everybody right now is anti. YouTube will shut you down. That's crazy. Like that is untouchable. That movement yeah, like overall anti hate is big right now in general as to learn how to not be hateful towards anybody because people just don't understand and there's so much programmed um beliefs so many programmed beliefs that people are are so afraid of anything that 
that contradicts what they've been raised to believe. But not mm -hmm. anybody who thinks they know it all really hasn't scratched the surface. You really don't know. And I believe I was raised oh, in a born again Christian family, and I know the Bible, and I, and I know truth, and I know what it feels like to to feel the presence of God, and 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 I also know the feeling of judgment, and I know my God, the God that I serve, loves me unconditionally, and I don't have to do anything to get right. that, and it doesn't matter what I've done. Mm -hmm. whether it's right or wrong and really is it right or wrong that's, you don't know. that's debatable um to tell you the truth and and that's that's oh. that's what y'all if you're interested we will give you some feedback on what is debatable at another time <laughs> when i am prepared if you, I if you like a judge and say this right here let, i mean i'm i'm just kind of giving a hint to that adam and eve thing when they, they ate the they ate the, the fruit that was forbidden so they can get the knowledge of what's right good and evil right but how do we know that what we say is good is good and how do we know what we say is evil is evil or is the and whole thing a misconception or is it a a deception that you was part saying? of our conversation earlier Earlier, yeah. If you How can you... separate yourself, if you can separate yourself 100% from conditioning and what you've been taught growing up and you can put yourself in a neutral zone. And um, if you were literally to delete everything from the programming in your brain, because we are conditioned and there's a lot of control happening from religion and from um, politics and from all kinds of different modalities. Um, if you can literally start over, reset, and you can learn how to connect to your spirit and your inner being and, and, and learn about your own natural ability to sense and discern right from wrong by how you feel and, mm -hmm. and, and realize that when you're feeling like crap or feeling bad, it's because it's an indicator that you're thinking wrong. If you can literally Ooh. deprogram yourself from your conditioning, and yep. start fresh and, and just have no knowledge other than you and your source. I guarantee you your perspective will change because, you know, after my dad died um, at 58 with no cause of death on the autopsy, a preacher who was prophesying, healing the sick, raising the dead, that kind of guy, um, with a lot of doctrines and a lot of power, um, it gave me a hunger to understand. And I studied all religions and I studied science and I, and I know how the body responds to thought and I know how, different things affect us mentally and and all i know now is i don't know anything and and in order oh, for me to survive i have to not go off of other people's of account which is the bible the bible uh -huh. is the word of god in a lot of senses but they're also written by human beings who sometimes heard god and sometimes didn't and it's right. okay if there's flaws don't worry about the flaws you need to worry about your connection with your inner being and your source so that you can have the wisdom to know his character or not his, but the character of your creator and your source. If you truly are able to get in touch in your own time without relying on everybody else because you're lazy and you don't want to actually do your own research and your own alignment, get in touch with your creator in your own self in your own private time and you will start to recognize what is the voice of your creator and what is the voice of the world and control and destruction and things that are are causing racism and causing the chaos and causing the strife and i'm telling you you will never 100 percent know truth until you learn how to connect to the creator that created you and you can learn to use your own naturally given guidance system to be able to discern when it's really truth or when it's control and i'm telling you i love the presence of god i love to worship and i love the power of getting into a space of joy and peace and 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 in christianese it's the power of the holy spirit but it's the same thing when it's not called that it's like water who said that wayne dyer maybe what the word water doesn't make you wet it's a name it's a language we have languages and anything that doesn't line up with your language you get confused about and you get fearful about but my message today is to open your mind to truth 
and go into your own prayer closet meditation process, whether it's music or whether it be prayer or whether it be listening to an air conditioner and crossing your legs and humming, whatever it takes, whatever modality it takes to get yourself into a place where you can hear for yourself impulse from spirit that's when you can experience true peace and clarity and whenever you're confused all you have to do is get alone and stop talking in your brain and clear your mind so you can hear god hear source, whatever you want to call it i'm telling so, you so do you do you look at it like okay so people people actually have like conversations with themselves which we've always heard that if you talk to yourself you got something going on bro you need to go see a doctor bro you talking right? to yourself but Joy just plainly said, you can really talk in your brain. So thoughts Fantastic. Like, thoughts are like talking and, and actually, actually suggesting thoughts into your head that is not real. So when you have certain thoughts, they can actually, like I was talking earlier with Joy, she said they could actually grow and make themselves bigger than what they really are and in the beginning they were nothing anyway it, and and it could take it's, over it's, oh it's my thing, it's the thing of um when you plant something okay have you ever had this moment where you were mad at someone you had an argument right with it whether it be a partner or a friend you got angry and the more you think about it that night that you had the conflict the bigger it gets and the more pissed you get and then your mind goes into all these what ifs but yeah. then you go to sleep, okay? And you, let's say you said, I don't ever want to speak to you again. And you delete me out of your list and all this stuff. Then you, you go to bed and eight hours of sleep later, you wake up and you're like, oh my God, what did I do? It really uh -huh. wasn't that big of a deal. It's because they're, it, it, the law of attraction is like attract like, which means it's like a Google, Google search. When you type in something, for example, let's say someone has a problem with porn and they type in porno stuff, all of a sudden you start getting all these like items popping up in your thing and it happens to pop up when your kid's in the car, right? You're like, oh, ah! what? you know, <laughs> this is like down dirty stuff. But the thing is, <laughs> is, is if you can recognize the fact that there's momentum and you just need to step aside for a minute um, yeah. to let it slow down before you talk about it. So you're not in that, in that um, angry state. And a lot of times you can mm -hmm. avoid conflict if you can step aside and give it a little bit of time to slow down before you try to address it because things grow. And that's the same concept in Christianity is you plant a seed and it grows. If you plant an apple seed, you're going to get an apple tree. If you plant um, whatever it is you plant, it's going to grow. And so when you know that law of all normality, like in life, you can apply it to all categories and just recognize that right now you are in a state of chaos and you should probably let it slow down before you talk about it. You can so avoid it, so much drama. Is it anything, is it possible that you can actually intentionally place thoughts in your mind that are positive, that, that you want to grow? Well, yeah, why test it, this. Test this strategy. I'm telling you. Your That's feelings, easy. your feelings will follow your choice. So it always takes a little bit of time to get the momentum going. So one of my favorite teachers, Abraham Esther Hicks says, imagine being in San Francisco where there's all those hills, right? And you're at the top of a big hill and you have a car there and you take the, you put it in neutral and you go behind it and you slightly tap it and you go stand right out in front of it. If you mm -hmm if you stand in front of it you'll catch it before it catches catches momentum but if you try to go to the bottom of the hill after it's gained momentum it'll kill you so if you can catch a thought before it gains the momentum you can save yourself the destruction so that's why it's so important to be self-aware and be in tune with what you're thinking and how you're feeling because when you feel a little bit of a eh in your mind if you catch yeah. that feeling and you say, what am I thinking about? And you literally change the direction of your thought. You can catch that thought before it gains momentum and causes you problems and death. Mm -hmm. That's deep. It's That's true. Mm -hmm. Test it. Test it. Next time you are offended, choose to change your thought and, and force yourself. You sometimes have to literally it's distract so yourself. Okay, so let's put it like this. Remember we were talking earlier and I said, I said, Joy, you know, you should really 
go on and, and talk about, um, because you were talking to me about men uh, with their feelings, perception, testosterone, or the lack of it, or whatever. And um, a lot of times we have men, I mean, I'm just saying, like, when you come from the gym, you just got to pump an iron, and you're looking in the mirror, man, you think, you know what I'm saying, you're the next Arnold, you know? <laughs> but when you come home, when you realize you ain't Arnold, because if you got a woman at the house, now you gotta, now you gotta be a little, a little punk and and rub her face and be sensitive. And the way he says it, <laughs> and then what happens is like you're so scared. You're like, it's gonna make me get man boobs. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm gonna lose my six pack. You know what I'm saying? It, it, I think that I think what you're saying is right. I think anything you put your mind at, anything that you nourish, any thought that you nourish in your head, and and, and, you, and you let it escalate, will show even even in your body, in, in your in your organism, your whole makeup. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you can, and you. If you say, hey, I'm testosterone this and testosterone that, okay, well, you can say that all day, but when the cameras and the lights are off, you're in there talking about, I'm sorry. You I think it just depends on your character and if you're seeking to really understand. And um, a lot of times people withdraw when they're confused or when they're upset, but if they can just get to a place where um, they're – like if you really value somebody you don't have to understand and if you're unconditionally loving the person really doesn't have to do anything to earn your love and no. and, and you're empathetic no. to know enough to know that whatever they're going through is real to them and because you value them you're going to do what you can to be understanding and realize why they're that way you ask yourself different questions i wonder why she's Freaking out. It's kind of like a little baby, you know. Um, there was a story about this kid who was on a flight and a mother was on a flight and her kids were in the in the chairs and the flight attendant was looking at the mother like, you better not get out of your seatbelt. And the kid was terrified at the um, when the plane was taking off and the, na the noise of the engine. And the mother just wanted to comfort the child, right? Um, but really, oh. for safety purposes, she couldn't get out of the chair. But as soon as the Oh, there I got my light on. As soon as he um, was able to, um, you know, when the flight attendant gave the lady the okay, she was out of her chair, cuddling the baby, holding them, comforting them and saying, you know, it's okay, baby, it's okay. It's just the fear. Sometimes when you have a, a partner and they're super afraid, they're going to react like they wouldn't normally react because they're so afraid and they're irrational in that moment. And it's no good to mm -hmm. discount how they feel because it's just going to make it worse because they're really feeling a real fear in that moment. <laughs> so if you can literally, Ooh. to really love somebody, go, you're going to understand that they're going to be in places and moments where they freak out. Now, if you have somebody who lives in fear all the time and they can't overcome it, you might want to question who you're with. But, you know, when you truly love somebody, you'll comfort them when you think it's silly like, I remember what? my dad, he didn't really understand my teenage fear, but he let me cry and go, ah, he doesn't like me, and I'm so... And it was the end of the world to me, and he knew that I was being silly, but he, I didn't want to be fixed. I just wanted to be understood. And sometimes, uh -oh. man, it's, it's better for you if you can just be a comforting shoulder to cry on, and she doesn't need you to fix her. She needs you to hear her. And, and a lot of women being emotional creatures just need you to, to hear her and comfort her and say, it'll be okay, baby. It's okay. You don't have to fix her because what that'll do is it'll actually create a negative effect because she's feeling like you don't hear her and you don't understand what she feels and you're discounting her as silly. She doesn't want to feel like you think she's insignificant and full of shit. She wants to feel that you care and that you're understanding to her. And you can just let a little time go by before you talk about the details. Just let so her. That, so yeah. that word 
in that in that in that world you're saying I don't mean I don't mean to interrupt you at all, but I'm I'm just before I forget about because you got me on a train of thought, just like wow. But in that world. Yes, Mars. She said be present. I like it. Be present. I showed okay. Mars Maria. I showed him your pictures because he thought he knew who you were. Oh, um, she is, is awake. She is. Is that, like Mar is that She probably doesn't have her face on, so she kept declining. And she's our <laughs> little Asian connection. She would have been the perfect fourth. She's okay. A little Filipino girl. Okay. Oh wow. Tomorrow night, baby, you better be cute and ready, Chica. <laughs> so, okay, so let me ask you. It, you were talking you were talking earlier about like balance so like you have elements about yourself like you have a you have an element that says hey this is right and this is wrong this is my image of what i should be now this is the image i should be at this time you know um but there are other times that are things that you should be that's unfamiliar to you like comforting a woman, comforting a child. I mean, come on, you hand me a baby. He, he I'm, I'm hard. You know, my chest is hard. I'm, I'm just baby's gonna need to go to some things. I'm telling you, I'm just, you know what I'm saying. But at the same time, <laughs> I'm just. But at the same time, you know, it's small things that may not be you but it doesn't mean you can't so how do we know if there is really a right or wrong or maybe there is a right and wrong and we need to know how to balance you know properly manage or balance what what we're not used to doing you know because me i'm like look what is you crying about yep um. it's not even it's not even that serious. Right, don't, and that's, don't, where, that's but, where you have to get outside yourself. That's where you have to get outside yourself and realize that when someone's in a place where they're fearful, things become bigger. And I, I don't know if you've ever had a moment where you were super emotional about something and then it wasn't a big deal the next day. It's because in the moment when you're dealing with emotions and you're dealing with the contrast, you don't see anything outside of your storm. And so when you've got a, a dynamic with a male and a female and the man doesn't understand why the woman is freaking out, it doesn't really help him at all to think she's silly. It actually would behoove him. I love the word behoove, behoove. to actually just give her a shoulder to cry on and allow the momentum of that problem to slow down when she has more clarity. You know, and, um, I think that's the case with anything is allowing things to diffuse and just kind of slow down before you address it. That's why when there's conflict, it's better to, um, like even the Bible talks about, uh, you know, parents do not discipline your kids in wrath. You don't want to do things when you're emotionally unstable because then you wound your family members. So if you can allow yourself to say, listen, I, I, I'm hearing what you're saying and I don't agree with it, but you know what? I also know that I'm emotional. So I want to make sure because I value you and because I, I think you are intelligent and amazing, I'm going to put this on pause so that I can make sure my mind is clear before I respond. And a lot of what? times it's some women would hate that because they feel this, they want to hear now. But the thing is, is if you're really smart, you'll let him have his time to clear up his mind first. Women, give your man space. If he says he needs to have a little walk or a little man time, give it to him because otherwise you're going to get abused. Why do women want to push men for some answer right now when they're in an emotional state and they they might be too emotional to respond right now? I think it's really healthy for people to recognize the instability in their emotions and say, hey, I need to step away for a little bit here and give it a pause so that I can calm down before I respond because you're important to me and I don't want to damage you. And that's a big thing. And, and anybody who, who um, wants to accuse a man or a woman of, 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 um, of trying to, um, what do you call it? Uh, trying to avoid, it's not an avoidance. It's literally, they need to calm themselves down first to respond appropriately. And a lot of times things become bigger in our minds in the moment and we get angry and then we hurt people we love. 
because we are not in a place where we need to be responding. So when there's something that's so close to you that is touching you so emotionally, it's pushed buttons. You can be the smartest, strongest, most kind person. But if somebody push, pushes a button and it, it triggers a wound in you, you will respond like a, 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 an animal in pain who is biting yeah. you because you're pushing a wound, you know? Mm -mm. So I think it's really wise for anybody to listen to their partner when they say, I need to step away for a minute and don't be in torment. Just realize they're doing you a favor by not responding right now when they're so emotional. You know, it's a key component too. What? I am. I'm absolutely. A, I think I'm the best comforter to a woman in the world. All men think that like, baby, I'm going to comfort you. Know, you. You're gonna start singing Jodas to me and shit. Comforter. You know when you know when I'm the best comforter to a woman in the world? You know when? When? When you wanna get some? Mm, no. Cause that's the best time to get some. <laughs> but when when whatever her problem is does not concern you. <laughs> that's a beautiful thing. What do you think, Alex? <laughs> If, if 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 she had a problem by her boss at job, and you rub her head, it's gonna be all right, baby. But if she come home and say, "I can't stand you because you got these stinky socks," but now it's not. It's no longer. It's no longer comforting. We're we're not there. But if it doesn't concern you, you're good at comforting. <laughs> Quiet for a minute. Let's see if what's going on in your brain, brother. I'm just you guys and really kind of taking it all in of what you guys are saying. But you know, it's it's crazy how like you guys are talking about the you know when women get all emotional and the man doesn't ha has a hard time understanding the woman and you know and I've seen it where a man can back off and then she gets mad because he's backing off. And then if he responds to her, it creates even more crazy right. because now responding to her now, she's responding to him and it's just creating a big old crazy, you know. And you know what, that's, oh, I had to stand up for a minute because, you know, um, like you said, you gotta go at it with love, but you know, whether there's a right or a wrong, it's it all boils down to what both of you are willing to also compromise on certain things because true. some things there are no right and wrong some things are about compromise there is no right or wrong and if you know you can't be also the man can be very insensitive because she might think it's a big deal you might think it's no big deal at all but how she's reacting obviously is telling you that something is hurting her. And when you think it's not a big deal, you're already creating that division between your woman by thinking it's not a big deal. Right. I've, I've, you know, you're already creating that division I've done. by you thinking it's not a big deal. Yeah. It's okay that you yeah. think it's not a big deal. It's okay to think that, but it's not okay to make her think that she's like wrong by thinking it's not right. a big deal because to her it is uh, what? and it's okay it's okay that she thinks it's a big deal mm -hmm. and it's also okay that you don't right but you exactly. all you could do is just comfort her for that moment Ooh. give her some love and know that you're caring about how she's feeling period right Ooh. period move operator <laughs> I'm so <laughs> Dr. Alex. Dr. Alex. <laughs> Dr. Alex. <laughs> with a tag name for him. Dr. He even had the voice too. He was like, you know, uh, <laughs> it was. I even got the hair. It was. Cool. It was like a cartoon. <laughs> He's like, so you know, there's no right or wrong, baby. <laughs> Boy, smooth. 
Bro, you just made somebody come from Terrence to smiling real quick. <laughs> Alex, I don't know what you're talking about. I, Alex is like, this whole conversation about this thing y'all talking about, man, I ain't even got an issue. But because y'all do, I'm going to be with you. <laughs> Alex is woke. Alex is definitely woke. If you want to please define what woke means. I'm not going to come here and say, man, I ain't got that issue. No, no. Alex going to be like, hey, man, look, let me peek. You know, I think, but if you really think, I think we all have an inner intuition that we sometimes just don't tap into it sometimes. Yeah. But when you, when you talk about being right or wrong, I think at the end of it, like we're given a mind, a heart that can connect. And if we really want to understand it and listen to like sometimes when something is right or wrong, even if you think, or you make yourself think that it's okay or not okay. We, we, I think we sense it when something is right <laughs> or wrong. Right, we, a lot of people like you know that. And I, I'm really, really sensitive to that. Like, you know, even when I have a bad thought of somebody, it affects me because I'm like, oh, I just thought something negative about that person. Or I just like, I'll, I'll literally, I'm like, I, sometimes my plane, my brain can literally like go into circles and, and I can make my own self a little crazy where I have to just stop, like stop, just stop thoughts right now. Or just, you know, do something completely off to not let myself play my own mind games. Right. But at, at the end of it, we all still have an intuition that tells us when something is not right or okay. Like you walk up to somebody and you just punch them out of nowhere. Like, does that feel like it's like not right? It might feel okay at the moment if you wanted to really do that to someone, but do you know it's wrong? You probably know that it's wrong to do. You know, like we have that intuition where things that we do, do come off like it's not the right thing to do. Right. What is, you know? What, and when we're I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm, no, it's okay. But when you you know, and when we're pushing attitude into it, we're pushing that anger into it. You're putting it you're putting your energy into being angry and being frustrated and being impatient and being unloving and uncaring. Like you know, we know we're being those things sometimes. And which tells us that we're probably not in the most right at that moment you know so i think we have it in us and a lot of times we're questioning ourselves and we want we want here's the thing we love it when we get someone else to agree with what our opinion is and when you get more like reactions of what you want to hear Ooh. then it becomes all of a sudden okay right Good. it becomes okay now but if you're talking to the wrong, if you, in your eyes, you might be, you might be telling yourself, well, I'm not asking the right person. No, I'm not asking so-and-so. Why? Because you're going to hear what you want to hear. Want to hear. Exactly. Oh. That's the key, right? Is to be able oh. to, oh. when it's something you don't agree with, can you still respond in love? Right. Because you have, if you, right. the more, you've heard that thing, but the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, it, yeah. is it possible that, the right and wrong is actually stroked by a broad brush and we realistically do not i mean we, we realistically do not care about what's right and wrong we just have this need for whatever reason to always go top and to always be right to always have the last word of a conversation People we, just want to feel like they were understood. And I think no matter where you are from your perspective, we all have this need to feel understood. And even if we're not right, we want to feel like people are hearing what we have to say and that we're not being neglected and that we're significant. Doesn't and, it sound like the person who's needing that love too? Oops. Like what Alex was saying? Like the person that wants that needs that affection whether it was right or wrong they want to be understood so they were they're needing that from us but then a person who doesn't understand that they also feel like hey i want to be understood as being right you, you and know, that's that uh, whole conflict of do uh, i want to be right or do i want to be in love you know what i mean it's kind of like uh, sometimes it might behoove you that's that word again 
it might mm -hmm. behoove you to just allow them to be right for the moment, even if they're not, just so that they can feel significant to you. And then when you can address it later, you can address it later when they're not as delicate. Is there a smart? Is there is there a small fear though? Like let let's just say if if a guy just kind of humbles down and says, "Hey, check this out. I'm here for you." Right? But is there a small fear before you do it that says, "If I do this this one time or whenever another whatever, is this person going to take advantage of that?" Like Am That's I another always, perspective. I don't know. What do you think, Alex? Like, am I always going to have to do this? Like, Alex, for real, like, if I come to you and offer you my, you know what I'm saying, my heart and humble to you, and you like that, is it going to, are you going to take advantage of that? And is it going to be something I have to always do for you all the time? There, that's a small you know that people will have that is to me that comes with experience that comes with life lessons of what type of people you want to surround yourself with because you should be able to be vulnerable with people that you love and care i love that word vulnerable and you should be able to get the same reaction from them without everyone putting up a, even if it's that kind of wall where you can see through it, but you can't touch, you know? Mm -hmm. And so if you're in that position, at the end of the if day, you're in that position, you should double think your relationships, right? Yes. I was going to say that if you have to feel a sense of that, I don't know if I should go this way or that way or this far, or not that far then maybe that should tell you something that again, the intuition, see, there's the intuition. Yes. Where you're like, wait a minute, like I shouldn't be feeling like this or, you know, reacting this way. If I really feel like this person really loves me, guess what? You check out buddy and you got to move on. Sometimes you have to move on. Sometimes the hardest thing is letting people go that you never really thought you'd have to let them go. It's but you gotta let them fly for a while that alex until one day maybe they'll come around it's hard to but you know it's a growing body that mm -hmm. that nice round booty walk away and she's gone that that i'm telling you have you ever seen okay what did you just say right now what did you say right now i said having what walk away i said that is hard just uh. a fine silhouette mm-hmm Nice curve, okay. booty, all that walk away from you. Okay. Your life. That is well, like, they manipulate oh, don't... you with their looks. Listen, they do. I'm going to tell you something right now, my friend. They do. That, that, what you are describing is lust and not love, my friend. That walking away from you is just temptation saying goodbye. I need something that's going to be worth long term. That just seems like it's a temporary fix. Alex is a, That's a temporary a psychologist. Preach it, Pastor. Alex, it, Alex Pastor. is Alex, a under Alex. I, Matter of fact, Alex, you my dude, bro. Alex is I'm just saying. He puts stuff in certain ways that's like so smooth, bro. Like, <laughs> hey, what's up, man? Let me tell you the game. Let me. You. Yeah, baby, man. Man. I'm coming to your store Friday, baby. The Alex ain't got no problem. You got a problem. You better not go to Alex with no woman problem. He might snatch her. Cause if I, if I tell you, you better get it together, brother. Cause you can bring over here. Don't come over here, man. Hey, 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 Mr. Somebody, uh, I think Alex got a PhD. Mr. 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 Vincent. Mr. Vince. Convincing, okay, Mr. Convincing, we might have a third party in our new little guru. Uh, just saying, just saying, because Alice bring it like you know what I'm saying. Doctor Phil can't do. I mean, he like Doctor Phil good. He man, I, <laughs> I was gonna say so. Let me lay it down for you, baby. Let me you tell better you. <laughs> Hey, hey, Empire, you get hey, hey, catfish, you gotta get. Here. 
fucking um, smule more because this boy is like babysitting once in a while, not very often. Oh, so Alex, you're not on smule? Um, I've been hibernating, but I, I've smelled in the past. Oh, okay. His voice is incredible. You want to sing a song together, all of us? Um, you want to sing? <laughs> we're going to sing Joy to the World. <laughs> oh, I'm going to start one and you guys do the next line. I got sunshine. Go ahead, um, Alex. On a cloudy day. <laughs> Catfish. When it's cold outside, I got the month of May, Alex. Well, I guess you'll say, what can, can make me it? feel this way? Joy, joy. <laughs> Alex? <laughs> Talking about joy, 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 joy. <laughs> Alex in the background with tuxedos on, doing the whole temptation dance. <laughs> no, but Alex's voice is is freaking like levels above most, and um, he's he very rarely practices it, which is impressive. You know those people with the natural gift. This yeah. Voice. Um. When he when he joins me, I'm like. Speaking. <laughs> his speaking voice is freaking nice too, because. And his hair. Like, <laughs> when, when he gets when he gets oh you, <laughs> I ain't saying all about the day I'm here now. Come on, man. I know. Cat but, um, but, <laughs> and, uh, we what, get past, and then he gets really into it, like you know, so so. so it, <laughs> <laughs> I don't shave shit. <laughs> oh, man. He's so crazy. Yeah. Hey, Alex, Alex, Alex got real passionate about something, man. It sound like, man. It's like, have you ever heard a Catholic uh, preachers preach at a Catholic church? <laughs> it, I it's a difference oh, wow. between, it's a difference Every time between you feel and get back up and Catholic kneel and get back up and kneel and get back up, that's all I can pay attention to. I'm assuming you put me in the Catholic category because I'm Mexican. Oh! <laughs> now I feel like a white going totally not. No. I'm back to with it. No. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Is, that, is that why? It's like, no. Why? No. <laughs> why is it always got to be about race? <laughs> I got a Mexican friend. I got one real good. Like, 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 I went to a Catholic church once, and uh, when they get to the the sermon part, you know, the just the speaking, just the, and the alms, alms, and when it got passionate, <laughs> when it got real passionate. Because brothers, when they get past it, brothers be like, yes. <laughs> but when the Catholics get, you know, passionate, he goes, let me tell you in the Lord. And, <laughs> and, and thou, thou, and thou. And That's Alex. He's like, and yes, and oh. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you. I've been over there like, hey, you know what? You got right and wrong. I Alice think says, you're in a Baptist church right now, baby. You're in a Baptist oh. church. What's Baptist? Yeah, for real. What's the Baptist do? <laughs> you know the Baptist. You imitate the Baptist. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're not here get that pass. I'm over here dunking somebody full body. And, and Alex over here sprinkles. Sprinkles. <laughs> sprinkles. <laughs> I just broke my cigarette because I was so excited. <laughs> I don't even drink it anyway. I need Jesus. You need to tell me your secrets. Come in here. His so eyes are popping out of his head. I think he's about to start speaking <laughs> in tongues. 
<laughs> it's amazing how we're so different. And the thing about it, most people don't know we're different. Like, like if you ever took the time to go to, like, I can't say nothing to Joy. Joy is so mixed up with everything, you can't convince her or nothing. But I'm going to tell you, if you go, like, like if you go, you really go to a black church. And I'm talking about one of them church, everybody in there is thinking. Because they oh, jumping around. Yeah, and they jumping and hollering. White person. You know what I'm <laughs> But then you go, but that's that's how we know the Holy Ghost is there. The more activity that you do, you know. And then I went to a Catholic church, and I was like, man, this is kind of like, this is, man, you feel that you can feel God because it's, 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 it's. How can I say, sanct, sanct, sanctity or um, reverence, rever, reverential. It was just and very more, uh, traditionally like reverent and, and traditional. It's all holy. It's it's just he reads the scripture and he's that's it. And he speaks kind of like Joe Osteen, real smooth. Just, mm. <laughs> Joe <you know>? Osteen. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no ain't no T D Jakes. This is Joe Osteen. It's smooth, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it kind of gets you because you're like, hey man, this is not nothing, no shouting. This man is mm. this man, this man here, that he got some house in here. <laughs> man, for real. And I can see like I can see Alex talking to a lady, man. Don't get me started, brother. Don't get me started. Okay. <laughs> Boys, boys, boys. boys. Alice right, can put the. I know Alice can put it down, man. I hey, know if uh, that's hey, sermon. I'm gonna ask you a good question. No. I'm gonna ask you a good question. <laughs> so, Alex, I'm gonna ask you a question, and I want you to tell me. When was the last time you went to a gathering and you felt the presence of God and it gave you something different than normal? Tell me about that experience, and then I'm gonna Say have again. you do that. Think about it. Say again. Because you were you were cutting out funny. Oh, okay. So what I want you to do is tell me the last tell me about the experience the last time you went to a gathering where you felt so inspired by God, and that encounter you had with the higher being, um, how it impacted you and how it touched you. And then after you're done, I'm gonna have you tell me the same thing, um, Mister Invincible, or what was it again, Mister? Convincing. Mr. Convincing? Is it Mr. Convincing? <laughs> Whatever it is. I'm tipsy. But I need Jesus right now. But I want you to tell me, Alex, the last time you were um, touched by God and what gathering you were in and what it was that, that you felt and that encounter. And then I'm going to go to you after him. Mm. Well, there's an echo going on. It's your turn, Alex. He's frozen. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, it was echoing. I don't know what's... Oh, whatever. Okay. Um, that means it's going to be really good because when there's that feedback, it's because something's trying to stop you. So just speak. Ooh. <laughs> Spooky, <laughs> just playing. <laughs> oh boy. Um, and be real and authentic, and don't biggest. be your mm. He said, oh, Alex, he said, be 100 with it, too. Mm. Mm. In the presence of God. Mm. Are, you, are, are can you ask? Well, you know, question? I or do you know what it's, it's a big question, but you know, I've been in the last gosh, it's been a it's been a while now that I've been really getting deeper into prayer and the word and um so when you say gathering, I mean if it's gonna be like gathering with people, it would be I would say Cause I do like we do midweeks on my Zoom on Zoom calls. Um, if we're not if we're not in the church service, um, but I do so much. I do a lot of praying on my own. Um, 
I did fasting like a few days ago. I fasted for like a day and it was like, it was deep for me, but um, oh boy. And you could be vulnerable because there's, this is a no judgment zone. This is a mm -hmm. zone of love and, and it will help other people. And that's where we're at right now is. I don't forget we're live. People. Oh, wow. <laughs> I thought this was like a phone call. No, we cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I need to lay back on the beer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, Joy, <laughs> do me a favor. <laughs> Connect me back because there's a really bad echo going on on my end. Invite me back really quick. Okay. I don't know how. Okay. Uh -oh. I'm going to invite him back. You got to get Alex back. I like Alex. Yeah, Alex is awesome. He's one of my besties. Like, I adore him. He Alexander? Works the, he works at the Blue Mercury store that I work at, and I met him, and I found out he was on Smule. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was awesome. was... Alex is gone, so when he comes back, I'll add him. Okay, there we go. It's... I'll add him. Is he, is he, is he a preacher? Is no. Alex? No, but he huh? should, he's he's a, a very there you go there you are baby now way better like the the echo is gone I couldn't really understand what he what I was saying so, um, but, you know I would the answer to that question it's a big question because I've been feeling a lot of connections every time I've been getting, like gathering with some of my brothers and sisters at at church and stuff and just getting together with people and, you know just getting real deep into conversation about. You know, because we care about where we're at with each other's spirituality, which is nice to hear when people talk about that. Not just talk about like, you know, did you make that deal? Did you get that job? It's like, where are you at spiritually? That's like a whole nother level of right. a question when people ask that to each other. And it's a really amazing thing to ask because we always ask and more. very vulnerable to, to mm -hmm. respond to. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but you know, it's been, um, I would say, cause I've gone on prayer walks at Lone Mountain too with friends in the past. And it's really impactful because like you're up in the morning, early morning, going out for a walk and just praying together. And it takes me back to like the days, even when Jesus walked and he walked around with his disciples and just like praying together, talking about things together. And I mean, it's like, it's real deep, you know, and I just really, those moments just really like touch me deeply because I get into like prayer talk and I'm just like, I mean, I'm, I'm like the cry baby, first of all, like I'll be praying, talking and praying and I'm just bawling my eyes out. Like after like a few couple of minutes, I'm already crying about something or I'm emotional about something and and I already stayed in my prayer, so I'm like, I'm just so sorry. Like, I'm, I just, I'm a, I know I'm a big crybaby. And, and it's nice to know that it's okay to be vulnerable and to be open to literally peel off every layer off. And, yeah. and not have any sense of worriedness of what someone's going to think of you or what they're going to say of you how they're going to perceive you going forward. Like if anything, it's so much more of a connection because people, <laughs> I, I notice people appreciate vulnerability. People appreciate transparency. They do, you know, and we're in a world now where it's like, it's unheard of and you don't do that. You don't show your soft self. You don't show the side of you where, you know, you might either have a tear or have a sense of like, compassion you know <laughs> have a sense of like your heart really like pouring being poured out to someone you know it'd be really amazing to see what would happen in relationships if they really pour their heart out and not their anger out true how much it would grow right how, how much more of a connection people would have you know pour your heart out not your tongue to someone you know, like just really 
connect with them in a sense of like you speak to them in a nurturing sense and that's why when i get together with people like say from my church there's a connection of intimacy not in that way but an intimacy of that way that you connect with the spirit with god and you really have a sense of commonality that has nothing to do with color racism that your walk and how you do things and what your life is about as far as work and family no to know that at the end of it god is number one no matter what he oh, comes yeah. first no matter what you know if relationships put him first that already is half the battle that yeah, already is that, half the battle here it's that fear that causes people to have that disconnect mm -hmm. and um when you mm -hmm. can literally open yourself up to be vulnerable and be true and be who you really are people see you differently and they can relate mm -hmm. it's like oprah with man i live by the airport sorry that's okay it's powerful but oprah said once you know she has this piece of painting this this artwork on her on her wall where um it's a, it's an image of a slave lady and then there's all these smaller images on the piece of artwork where there's actually prices next to the names and it's joanna 47 five hundred dollars jeffrey 22 eight hundred dollars yeah. and she's like it reminds me of where i came from and um that there could be an actual price tag attached to a soul like that is is crazy and um and 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 i feel that way with my dog like i paid six hundred dollars for her 15 13 years ago and she, there's more value i've received from her than the price tag on her soul and um mm. it's interesting how we can create value based on 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 a, on a soul you know and um really there's so much richness and and everybody that we come in contact with and we don't even realize it and because of our biases and our conditioning and our our hate and um if we can just literally open ourselves up to the possibilities and the love and understanding that we're all boiled down to scientifically balls of energy that go yeah. back to the same source we came from when we die. Um, whether you believe in Jesus Christ or you believe in Mohammed or you believe in Buddha or whatever it is you believe in, um, all the religions, we, we go back to where we came from and um if you think it's the end of this hundred year existence you might have another thing coming to you and you might have to push replay and restart on the video game because um this whole existence is about creating and about loving and about doing a better job than you did the last time and if you don't believe that <coughs> Hey, well, I feel bad for you because if it's just a hundred years and that's it for me for all eternity, I'm pretty sad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's deep right there. That mm -hmm. might be into this episode, although we can keep talking because I'm enjoying it. But um, in the editing process of producing a video, I might put that as the end because that's pretty much it all boils down to is we all have differences. We all have ups and downs and we all, all have emotions and perspectives, but if you can slow down a lot enough to love and seek to understand instead of judging you might have a fuller life and have a more enriched life and experience better food <laughs> like mm. food is the bomb and so is sex and you know there's different ethnicities that have good sex too so don't limit yourself my friend <laughs> mm -hmm going it's an opportunity to end the broadcast but we'll keep going if you want i just wanted to um spit that out because it's really powerful and um we all have differences we all have different life experiences that affect the way we see things but overall everybody in their own private time is just doing the best they can from where they are and from what they know even those most hateful people that do things that are stupid they don't know any different. They're literally programmed and conditioned. 
And so overall, I think the best practice is to try to seek to understand mm -hmm. versus and to, to seek to love instead of hate and to seek to try different foods instead of just neglecting different foods because you're missing out. When you, you know, my brother, you know, I'm sorry. I do. I do. I, I, I really would like to continue to, to talk. Keep going. I, I keep going. We'll keep going. We can make a second episode of this. I don't care. I'm just being me. <laughs> I, I, was, I was listening to uh, Alex um and alex alex see we're we're all uh individuals and different and, and, and unique and when we go when we when we go before for god and we pray to him you know um sincerely we get vulnerable but at the same time all of us have different upbringings, um, uh, backgrounds, and when we go, we don't all go the same. Mm -hmm. And I noticed when I heard, because I never heard that before, like, I noticed when I heard Alex and how he goes before the Lord in prayer and in fasting and things, it's, it's, it's almost like more of an enlightenment, like, an enlightenment to be more than self. Um, a, an intimacy that is that is more than what we consider human. You know, a, a deeper love that cannot be explained. I, I felt that. You know what I'm saying? And I never heard I never heard it that clear and just simple like that, because. My experience with church and going to church and praying and stuff is it, it, it's it's a lot more complex, mm -hmm. but it's it's more something like that ah healed and you know it's more it's more that you know what I'm saying than just simply Reverend. being straight up just I'm here. I'm here. I'm he I'm here. I'm. I'm. I can I do the hand. Can I do the hand? You, I'm, you know I'm what's here. gotten really simplistic for me. <laughs> yeah, gotten, I'm saying. What's gotten extremely simplistic for me is going forward, where I can not be a church person, not be a religious person. I have my relationship with Jesus that I can talk to. And I can just speak to him when I need to have a friend. Um, sorry. Um, go ahead, go ahead, bro. Beautiful. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. You got this. I got. I'm with you. I feel it, man. Oh wow, bro. See now, you gonna get me started. <laughs> oh wow. Keep going, baby. Mm -mm -mm. You know, it's um, it's different. It's just another, it's another walk that I'm on now, and it's a way that I can now connect with him in a way like, you know, you can step out your door and just have a conversation with him and just say either it's an awesome day or you know what, I'm having some problems today. We need to talk, or I just need to lay something out and share with you something or you know what i've done something wrong and i need to get it off my chest i need you to help me with it you know as long as we can keep turning to him like you know there's no like there is no wrong or right in how we do it as long as we can manage to be like willing to accept that there is you know, number one, there is life after this. This isn't just all that we that's going on. This isn't all that it is. And you've you experienced know? that personally recently with your friend's passing. Yeah. yeah. That play in your closeness with God recently. Yeah. And um so, you know, I think and if it took that for me to have this experience that I'm now living this whole different way of 
if I live my life, then I'm blessed. I feel like I'm blessed because of it, because I don't, I don't take it for granted anymore. And like my, you know, my friends from church explained to me, like, yeah, it's going to be tough. I mean, you know, following God's word, no one, he never said it was easy, but he said he'll be there for us regardless. Right. He never said it was going to be easy. And, you know, just like everything, you got to work at it. And it's a, every day is a battle. And if it's not one thing, it's another, you know, but as long as we keep him next to us and we talk to him and we have openness to the point where you can just spill everything out to him, number one, mm. and really just have that sincere talk and just let anything out let any kind of even if you're angry then let out the anger talk to him about it like you know you, if and that vulnerability allows you to actually hear mm -hmm. it's that actual struggle that makes you vulnerable enough to be able to hear yeah mm -hmm. and you know i just think that that's allowed being that way more and more has allowed me even to be that way more with people and you know and you know people can accept I, i'm not here to tell i mean i don't obviously i'm not here to i don't tell people what they have to or they don't have to believe all i know is that what i've discovered it's it doesn't cost anything it costs nothing but just opening up your heart it doesn't cost anything there is no seminar to take there is no you know no, 499.99 dollars you know no. for each payment plans no my god it is there for us to accept it or not accept it and i'm not yeah. gonna get that if you don't or if you do if you do awesome and if you don't you know i can only speak from my own experience but it's not it's amazing how much we pay for all these seminars. It really blows my mind. Thousands of dollars. And yet, like, he's, he's right like, inside of you. He's just right, you know. I can read about him anytime, and I can talk to him anytime I want. And it doesn't cost a dime. Free. You know, let me tell you something about this really quick. So this bag belonged to my best friend who passed, right? And this bag is made to actually carry a gun. Because him and I used to go, he, he took me for the first time to go practice shooting to a shooting range. And um, he started loving, like being able to go out and shooting and getting that kind of like, he was just loving the sport. And he was someone that never liked it, like guns, period. And he's like, you know, I should just have protection in my home and I should go practice. And he was. And he invited me to go one time with him. And um, so I went, had a great time with him doing it. And um, we were supposed to go back again. We went like in August and we were supposed to go again. And I mean, unfortunately he passed in October, October 2nd. Um, and I was with him during his home hospice or whatnot, but uh, moving forward after he passed, um, this was under his bed. This bag was under his bed. It was brand new. And um, it's crazy because it's made to carry a weapon and now it only carries the only weapon I'll ever need and it's my word. Like it's God's word. Mm -hmm. that's what put in this bag. And that's what I carry. I carry my Bible in here. You know, I still love the sport and I'll always go I'll, I, to go practice and whatnot. But in, when I found this Bible, which was like back in the 90s, it was a Bible that I had back when I was going to church in the 90s. I was looking for something in my garage and when i found it i had this bag already and literally when i opened the bag when i dropped the bible in there it fit to the t there's no more room for anything in there and you know what as i'm learning when i'm learning in my journey there is no error in how everything is planned out even if it's extremely painful god is there to help us Amen. he is for us period no matter how painful things are going to come around 
because there will be pain. He never said there wasn't going to be any pain, but he will be there for us if we allow him to be there through the good and the bad. So that's, you know, that's, that's definitely, um, I've learned that and I just I embrace that now every day I wake up, you know? You're spot on, Alex. You know, it's it's like it's not even, especially the television, the televised churches. The, I mean, I'm not going to speak anything against any ministry, but it, it they're not preaching what you said. They're preaching if you give a thousand dollars. Look at the number. Look at the number on the screen, one eight hundred. And I'll give you some holy water. And if you give, it'll come back a hundred times fold. That is our new gospel. So what happens is it leaves a lot of us um, lost, cheated. We feel cheated because I noticed that you you just said that that. Great love that 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 intimacy is free. I mean, you don't have to buy anything, it, and that is what is missing. There's a lot of ecclesiastical. I mean, there's a lot of hi, Molly. <laughs> you know, churches. It's not. They're not saying what you're saying. They're not connecting like on that level. They're, we're, we're shouting, you know, and jumping up and down and playing really good music. Like I can take you to some churches, man. The singing will blow you away. It's like a concert. Yeah. All of that. You feel great. You get emotional and then you go home and you're still where you were. But what you said, that's what I was talking about earlier. I went, I'm not saying that one church is above another, but I have never been Catholic. And, and I'm not saying that you are. I'm mm. just saying my experience is in the, in the, the priest who was uh, doing the preaching or the, you, you, I don't know what they call it, but, the, but when he was speaking, he spoke in the way that you speak intimate transparent pure and true without any major all out the wall emotion or anything just the pure word just that leave everything else alone that emotional vulnerability that realness that real mm -hmm. often people it's are true the real yeah, you, righteousness what well, that that's where you I'm, I'm telling you there's like more churches on every block than churches chicken. Okay. <laughs> they they are they are, <laughs> they are paying. I don't know. They, it's like we're it's like we go to church like we go to the casino, bro. Mm -hmm. right. Money in there, and you hope that you're gonna get a hundredfold back. And it has nothing to do with it's your own with, hunger. It's your own desire that pulls the the reality out of it. And then we have Alex right here spitting the straight up truth. Straight yeah. up. You, you just put it out. You said like, you said, you said you, you don't even want to pray in, in error. Like you, you said you fast. I'm like, why is he fasting for, is it he, because you fast so that your mind cannot be in error. When yeah. you pray. About when you food. deprive yourself of food, you have this hunger that relates to your spirit. Yeah. And 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 who, how, how many times have you turned on a Christian program or on YouTube or wherever? And I mean, they are up there performing. They're preaching. They sweating. They calling people out, bringing somebody to the stage. They're touching the head and they fall into the floor, and then everybody goes home and they get what. And like I said, I'm not calling out anybody. I'm only acknowledging. You know what's what amazing? That my friend that encouraged me 
to do a fast. He was crazy, crazy, crazy. My friend from church, his name is Emmanuel. The man is from Namibia, Africa. Really? Namibia, Africa. If you saw the man, he literally looks legit African. Like I know what you talk about. Because if he was on here and you looked at me, you'd be like, I don't, I don't know, Vince. You may not be African American. And and his wife, his was incredible. Talk about two sides, two sides of the planet. His wife, his wife, beautiful <laughs> wife, Megan. She's from Montana, and he's from Namibia, Africa. Talk about completely. What? Oh yeah, and they. So they have been, between deer hunting and maybe eating some plantains, right? I don't know. <laughs> and 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 a little and a little Afro dance here and there. Okay. <laughs> That's a mixture. <laughs> I, I've never heard of a mendip, uh, whatever that was, right. and so from no, I've never heard of that one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome, man. <laughs> Your but point. You know, I'm like, and it's amazing <laughs> because, like, when I'm if I'm struggling or if I'm going through like some hard times or whatever, he's like. How's your quiet times? Like, cause you know, we believe in having some quiet time with the word daily and have a little bit of read some scripture and get inspired and get our days, you know, started that way and let that be our, you know, our way to open up our morning and to start the day with right. reading a little bit of the word. And then he's like, he'll ask me, I was like, have you tried to fast? And I'm like, no. And he goes, well, maybe you should try to fast and get more clarity and to, you know, and I'm like, you know what? And then inspired me to do. That makes sense. Like, honestly, like when you withdraw your physical need, it creates a hunger that makes you able to absorb spiritual energy more. There's something to do with fasting that creates a mm -hmm. hunger. Spiritually. You yeah. know what? I, I fasted. Um, I think the longest fast I've ever done in my life, and like you asked before, um, Joy, what was like your most highest spiritual experience, or, or what? Uh, I, I'm just paraphrasing what yeah. you asked, and I I, I could assure you, um, it happened during the fast. Isn't that crazy? Seven, it's something seven. about hunger. It, it, it's, see, it's like, it's like you're hungry at first. I mean, you're in there, you're, you got like, your first two or three days, it's like a battle. It's a mental battle. Mm -hmm. you, you're like, you want, you want to make excuses. You get, you get all these thoughts and you want to make excuses why you should break that's why they call it breakfast, break to break. As it. I'm eating. But you, 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 your body, your mind constantly is telling you, um, okay, okay, you pray, it's going to happen, have faith, go back and, and go eat. But when you persevere through that, then that hunger that you, you, you had, it goes away. And I don't know if you get in a state of delirium because you have low glucose or in your blood. Or I don't know what that what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, he's laughing because he knows exactly what I'm talking exactly. about. Exactly. No, I know too. It goes. It like it goes away, and it's almost like you don't want to stop it because you start getting something that becomes relevant to you. Maybe no one else, but to you, and it 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 grows and grows and grows, almost almost like an outer body experience. Mm -hmm. Like it, you can't really say what it was, but it it's like being in a desert and you've been walking for a long time and you're dehydrated and you get mirages, like and hallucinations and stuff. Like you <laughs> are able to hear spiritual things that you would not have heard otherwise. Exactly. 
Exactly. And when I did it, I did seven days. And it it gets to a point to where you're like, okay, at first you, at first you say, okay, I'm making a, um, a plan and I'm planning these many days. Okay? And that's my goal. It gets to the point to where the days doesn't matter or how many yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and then you just like, when you pray, you're like, oh my God, I should have been doing this the whole time. Where have I been? It, like it, it opens you up to being able to focus on spiritual matters because you're so God, hungry that you're, you're able to consume what you normally wouldn't have consumed, consumed right. otherwise. And, and God, God, I, pr I promise it. I've never really talked to anyone about this because I thought it was like, it's kind of like when you wake up and, and you say something crazy on Smeal, you want to delete it. It was yeah. like, God took me out of my body. And I was praying. I left. My body was living, but I literally left my body. It was scary. It, I mean, it scared the socks off of me. Because it gave me confirmation that he's real. Right. And you can't and you can't know that until you put yourself in that state of being. You know, you can't know that just going about your day every day satisfying. Y'all are yourself. making me hungry. Yeah. We're talking about fasting and joy talking about shoot. Let me pull out this old broccoli pasta I had yesterday and warm it up. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and I'm going to say grace. Thank you for this food. <laughs> That's freaking awesome, man. I'm in the what flesh else? right now. Y'all are spiritual. I'm in the flesh. Alex is not with us anymore. Where'd he go? Oh, it's all right. Isn't he awesome? <laughs> Man, Alex is a jewel. I'm not lying. I've I've met people, but he's got something. He's got something definitely identifying. You know, that's you, the crazy thing is you get anybody in here who is pulled into that vulnerability, man. It pulls out of them what's inside, and everybody has those beautiful gems inside, and it just takes somebody opening them up. To see it, you know. He, but he doesn't seem like the type that will just come out and just tell you these things. It's like it's only for those people who really care to want to know. Yeah, no, he's it's, he's a gen. Yeah. He's a gem. I just added him back. There he is. I was we were, echoing again, so I had to let you guys go. We were we were talking about you. You know what we were I'm talking sure you about? Heard it. We were talking. Amazing your hair hair looks. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're talking about this uh, this noodle broccoli Italian dish that she's eating while we're sitting here talking about fasting. Mm. Make it uh, hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know her. what it is? It's sausage and <laughs> sausage and pesto. Ooh. And noodles and oh, it's so delicious. Stop. Ooh. No more growling. No, that was that that wasn't I me. Eat that all was... day, so this is beautiful to me. Oh I just God. realized that I was getting tired, which means I need fuel. Or I need fasting and I need to go with God. But because I'm talking to y'all boys, uh oh. I had to fuel up. Uh oh. Fuel Alex. Up. Can you can you cook? Are you a good cook? You? Who me? Oh, I'm the best cook. Alex, have you heard Alex? taste of my cooking? Not yet. You just helped me move. Yeah, I don't think I have tasted your cooking yet. Oh, I'm gonna cook for you, baby doll. But I used um, to meal prep for people. We gotta get so together. One of these days, you gotta come over. Now that I'm moved in, and I don't have COVID. Oh I'm Lord God. For you, I'm gonna cook. Oh, right that's right. You had COVID. I forgot you had COVID. Yeah, it was crazy because you guys were probably like trying to calculate the days to make sure I wasn't in your store. 
Oh, oh wow. I wasn't. I did not even think about that. So were you like the guinea pig to say, hey, let's see what happens to her? <laughs> no. Does it really do? Honestly, you know? it wasn't that big of a deal for me. Thank God. It was for me. I got COVID when it first came out. When it was all, I was freaked out about even talking about it. Because it was right when I came back from the cruise ship when I was working. I did. So. I think it was, but I got shoot my whole, this this my my son was like throwing up all. It might sound disgusting to you. I'm so sorry, but he was puking up all of his. You know, kids like to sniff their noses and swallow it, uh -huh. and it was just all that, and it was mucus, mucus, mucus. I got it. And it was like maybe a drop or two on my nose. And then the next thing was, it, you know, it, it just affects everybody differently. For me, I already thought I had really bad allergies, which I do. And it just got became worse allergies and I just got to have a vacation from work. And I'm like, this is bullshit. I was appreciating the time off, but I couldn't afford the time off. So it was a real conflicting situation. Because I was, I've been having so many bad allergies that even before COVID, I felt like I was enslaved to allergies. So I feel like the COVID was just meshing in with allergies and it just made it horrible, but I was, I just had to wait the 10 days to go back to work. So it was it was like a free break, but at the same time it caused me financial struggle. Hey, hey this this might sound strange. But since we're on that spiritual kind of talk, I want to see what you guys think about this. And I did it's not like something I just be believing. It's just like something I utilized because I felt like it was there to use and I tried it. But you know how you first, like, I think everyone knows, like, when they first get sick and they first start noticing, like, you were speaking um, like early. Like, smell, that was the weirdest. You, you said one, one thought uh, can be, like, on a hill, and then if you let it go down, it becomes more uh, velocity and bigger. Tell me out. Or... It, has to take its course after that point. Well, I I have always done this, and it, it I don't know why, but it, it works. Like when I first get symptoms, like sniffly or whatever, I kind of go like how Alex does, and I just kind of I just kind of lay my bed and I close my my my, my eyes, and then I meditate. And I virtually see that thing out of me. Like I it's like a it's like a switch you can turn on and you can feel it moving in your body. I don't know, like a shock or a a, mag a magnetism or something. And you can literally move the thing out of you. And then that next day it it has no you caught it early and it has no strength to grow and your immune system oh. can control your immune system to in my case and my case out. was my boss i believe that too because i really believe in the power of your belief and about your thoughts and mm -hmm. i believe too but when you have a boss saying you have to get a test and pay for it uh. that's a little different story but i do agree that they become big for more more significant or less significant based on your belief or your thought to them. I believe that anything that you put your mind to, the uh, I don't I can't give you the Bible scripture exactly, but every, everything that you put your mind to to believe is possible, and if you command something like as large of a, as a as a mountain and you really are convinced and persuaded about that thing, I, I believe that it, it will move for you. Um, and you have certain people that will believe different different things in their, in their situations. And it can move 
and then you have other people that if they tried to believe it, it wouldn't happen, you know, and then, and then it's like the testament to us that where the disciples asked uh, the Lord the same thing. They said, when we pray for these evil spirits to move out of people, why, do they, why do they not uh, obey us? And the Lord says that they needed to pray and fast. Now, we could take that literal, like everybody should do so, but it, may, it could have been personally towards them because he knew them, uh, what they needed to do, or he knew that type of spirit. But I do, I'm kind of with Alex on the, on the, on the intimacy, uh, intimacy part where you can be so in touch in, in love uh, with the spirit of God where you walk out and you see the newness of the day. It's like you open your eyes that morning and it's not like another drag or an alarm clock. You just go out. Right, right, now, exactly. Now you, see the bird. now you see the flowers. Now you see the beauty of, of the world. It's about and slowing when down, you, down long enough to be mindful in this present moment. And that's what being present means is, are you present right now? Yeah. There might be all kinds of contrast and all kinds of things going on, but are you present in the moment? Because mm -hmm. if you're present in the moment, you can have more gratitude. For sure. Yeah. It's a. It's like when we're talking earlier today, when you were speaking about um, focus. You know, when you take a magnifying glass and you mm -hmm. concentrate light rays, it, it could start a fire. Mm-hmm because it's focused and penetrating on one space on one point right, exactly and when you're and when you're praying for your child or if you're praying for a loved one that needs help in the hospital or you're praying for yourself you we have we all have a situation and god gives us that to where we can just focus and penetrate at one place at one point almost like a tenacity like a solid tenacity that says there's nothing more important in this life at this point than this one thing I'm praying for. I don't care what happens to me. I don't care if I die. There's only one thing, and I'm coming out victorious, and I'm going to see it all the way through. And Alex pretty much said, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. I don't care what people say yes. or or." unbelief or anything i am gonna if, if, if it's never been done before this is not a uh, famous trying to be famous if it's never been done before silently between me and god i am going to see this thing through and if i cannot see this thing this, this thing through then why should i even believe right i'm i want god to show himself to me yeah. it's like that it's like the it's like our fathers, one of our ancestors that, that, that wrestled God until his hip fell out of socket. He said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless my soul. Yes. Focused. And that's what I'm hearing from Alex. And I'm like, man, where, where did you pull this guy from? He's reminding me of that it's old that time. It's that real authentic passion and that feeling and that emotion. And I think that's what our God, our source responds to is the real authentic feeling when you really love. And that's how it is when women feel loved by a man, they will go out of their way to love and feel. And it's that feeling of significance, that feeling of contribution, that feeling of I matter and that feeling of I'm passionate. And and it comes when you're really believing in something and it's really emotional, you know? Mm. Yeah. How, see, that's how we look. How many, you just think about it, just look around the world. How many times have people said, <laughs> come what may, weather, loss of money, loss of house, loss of home, I do not care. 
I am not leaving my post until I get my solution, until I get my resolution, until I get my answer. I'm going all the way through until I get my answer. That determination, that's freaking, that's... That's where you. That's where you see God right there. So that's, it's interesting that you just said that I until I get my answer. Like that's big for me because um, Joy and I have had this conversation. So um, probably since nineteen or nineteen or eighteen years old, I came out as a gay man. Um, Excuse me. And. Um, it's so something that I've struggled with for a very long time. And I always struggle with it being right or wrong and just trying to understand myself since I was a very little kid. And um, so this, uh, you know, so for you to say like, I know I'm not leaving my post until I find out, you know, my answers, like, you know, this is something I'm very open with, with my church and very, very vulnerable about and we talk about this a lot um i openly say like i am attracted to men i'm not practicing living a gay lifestyle i'm not that is my choice and i have my right to choose that Mm -hmm. um am i still attracted to the same sex yes you know i'm not gonna deny what is facts like i just you know um yeah but i also have a right to do what I feel is right for me spiritually, you know, and I don't judge others. I've, I've, I don't judge people what they do and what they don't do. Again, I do what I truly feel what I'm called to do. And that's just, it's my walk, you know, it's my, and, and when you say not leave your post, like this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life and still learn gain wisdom gain understanding you know gain the wisdom that i need to keep moving forward and to you know and to testify to testify what i've been through and you know to you know to just really like be as open as i can to my lord and to just you know, whatever is meant to be with my walk, then so be it, let his will be. Like, I've been celibate now for, this sounds crazy, but probably more than three months now. Um, That's beautiful. And I'm I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. I'm okay to be the person that I can, I wish, you know, I hope that I can help couples. I'd love to see people in love I love to see marriages grow. I love to see families be nurtured when their kids are like, especially when they have kids, you know, I love to see kids being nurtured by their parents, you know, and to just starting off with having that source that for me would be God that can create that healthy momentum for them to grow up to be healthy adults, you know, whichever way, your kids are like again i my walk is my walk you know and to be as open as we can to have our kids be as open as they can when things are going on in their life if they're feeling like for example and i'll bring it up even with their sexuality that they can speak about it and talk to their parents about it not be shunned by it not be put down by it Not be told that God hates them if they're different. Not be told, you know, that they're going to go to hell if this. Like, you can't be talked to like that. You can't be told things like that. This is why we have suicide rates as high as we do. Because of the perfect families, supposedly, that are creating this whole view of just a hateful, you know, foundation already as they're starting out you know that's even like in schools with bullying and with you know name calling social media now is insane 
I mean, I can't uh, imagine what I'm, goes on I'm, with social I'm media. So, I'm so impressed and inspired by the way that you just brought that up because everybody here watching, um, and, and maybe there not be, might not be a lot of people watching now, but this video will reach other people outside of this live experience. Um, Empire here, uh, Mr. Invincible, no, Mr. Uh, mm -hmm. Convincing didn't know anything about Alex and his sexual orientation and the way that you just brought that mm. up, Alex, it's a vulnerable situation in a conversation like this um, to bring that up right now the way you did. And I, I watched you, Vince, and I watched how you responded, which was beautiful and very loving. Um, it's it's a hard thing to, to bring up in a conversation like this. And, um, I admire that. And, and there's so many people who have conflicted views about it. What's right, what's wrong, what's really appropriate. And do you really need to change or are you really mm -hmm. evil because of this feeling that you've naturally felt? And, um, and, and I personally don't believe that it's evil to have those feelings. Although there's a lot of people that do feel that. And, um, there's going to be all kinds of viewpoints on this topic. It's very controversial. And I, mm -hmm. I want to give you a lot of um, respect and, and honor um, in, in your ability to say what you just said and, um, and your perspective and to give other people a viewpoint on your heart. And um, whether it's right or wrong is really not the topic. The topic mm -hmm. is, are you 100% sure of your path and who you really are with God. And until you know that you're perfect, you really shouldn't mm -hmm. cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. and, and, and another thing is, is how do we really know that it's right or wrong? And, mm -hmm. and if it is wrong, those people who battle it, what is, what is the path to take? And, and if it's not wrong, how do we really know it's not wrong? This is such a huge topic. It is, it is. It's it really is. huge. But in the process, before you know the 100% solid truths you have to deal with your everyday life and you have to deal with your strongholds and you have to deal with your natural tendencies and is it really wrong and i think personally bottom line 100 percent is in your journey in your everyday life in the field experience if you can literally be honorable to what your internal gut is feeling no matter what anybody else thinks and you can be good and honest and and trust your intuition don't worry about all of the he, he say she say you mm -hmm. have to honor your own truth and mm -hmm. god almighty the creator of the universe is if you really believe in, in god and and a loving god who is fair and honest and loving and unconditional which means you don't have to do anything to earn the love. You are, mm -hmm. you have a birthright because of your royal heritage that God is going to love you unconditionally. You have mm -hmm. to find your own way and God respects that. And he only holds people accountable to what they know. And sometimes that he exactly. doesn't really coordinate with what you believe. You have to mm -hmm. go by your own gut influence. And in the moment mm -hmm. of confusion, that's when you just tuck into your internal self and spend time mm -hmm. in, in a place of quiet meditation with you and God, and you will find truth if you really commit to spending time alone with God. It doesn't matter who you are or how distorted your views are. If you say, God Almighty, whoever you are, the creator of the universe, I don't know your name because there's so many names given to me. There's so many names out there. There's so many religions. And I don't know who you are, but I want to know who you are. And I want to do what's right. I don't care about my physical desires. I just want to do what's right. I guarantee you, your creator, your source, the author of eternity will meet you right where you are. And it doesn't matter how good or bad you are, what you've done or what you haven't done. Nobody is deserving enough. Even the most religious guru of them all has fallen mm -hmm. short. You just haven't seen it. We're human beings and we're all bleeding red blood. 
And we all have goodness inside of us. And we all have the desire to feel understood and loved. And we all just want to love and to feel loved. So whenever you're uh -huh. feeling hate or misunderstood, step aside for a minute. Give yourself some time to readjust. Uh -huh. Because the truth is, we all just need to love. Bottom line. I need to be loved. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's true. I'm so emotional right now because of that. But that, I felt that. I felt that message just now so powerfully. And, and I would die for that message. And I'm naive. And I'm just a blonde white girl that lives in Vegas that <laughs> grew up in Washington and California. But I'll tell you this much. I bleed red. Yeah. And I had parents who were screwed up too. Even though my daddy was a preacher, he was still screwed up. And you could call it fucked up if you want. Depends on your language. Mm -hmm. Whether I say fucked up or screwed up really doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Same shit. <laughs> Different language. So maybe you shouldn't judge the language and you should judge the spirit of it. And um, just love people. Just love people. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand it, go just just go research a little bit and get to know somebody of an ethnicity or of a different culture and, and mm -hmm. you'll find that they're the same as you. Same weaknesses, same fears, same insecurities, same problems, just a different picture. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, we so lost true. Empire, huh? What happened to him? <laughs> I don't know, he disappeared. But I'm so glad you jumped in because we had like three ethnicities in one talk show. I know, right? That was cool. Isn't he awesome? <laughs> oh, yeah. He was He's... awesome. You know, in, in Smule, he gets a little controversial when he gets a little tipsy. <laughs> but oh, I really? love his passion. <laughs> yeah. He's hey, check awesome out these person. shoes I got today. Ooh, look at those. I'm a what? Wow. If anybody tries to mess with me, I'm going to kick them in the balls. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> are those spikes on the toes oh, oh my hot. goodness they're at that three dollar shoe store shoe store that's like a um one of those things you can't say this she sells she shells she shells on the she shore <laughs> <laughs> at least all seashells by the seashore <laughs> i'm so teary right now i love you i love you too thank you for jumping. i've been thinking about you i've been thinking about you the last few days so it's crazy when you popped up with him right now on the live, I was like, oh my goodness, I got to jump in if I could. I'm That's so how I was glad. watching you guys. I'm mm -hmm. so thankful that you jumped in because it was just, you know, it's one of those things where I told him, I'm like, we just need to jump in, not plan anything. Because we were having such a good conversation all day that we were like, we should be recording the whole thing and we should plan bullet points. I'm like, I think yeah. basically it's better to be like non-planning. Just go with the flow of like reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm walking my dog and you know, doing whatever I'm doing, eating and like blowing my nose. Mm -hmm. and I peed right there during the segment. Like whatever. Wow. I don't think you noticed, <laughs> but I peed. <laughs> I didn't notice it. <laughs> I miss you. Oh, I'm gonna come, do you should it, would it be better for me to come Friday or Saturday or do you know? Um, let me think. I'm going to be, the, I'm, what is, t oh, see, I keep forgetting. So today was Tuesday. Tomorrow, Wednesday, I'm off oh, Wednesday. Thursday at work. I'm off Friday, so I'll be there Saturday. Okay, I'll go Saturday then instead of Friday. Yeah, I'll be there. I won't I'll work be with there you Friday. On Saturday. On Friday. And if you, do you work before Saturday? Is Saturday the first day you work? Saturday. I work Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Well, well let's just try there. to make some numbers on Saturday. We'll do it. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. But I'm getting a I little tired. You. I think we should call it a night. I'm yeah, tired. I think this is done. Everybody, thank you for listening to our live broadcast with Alex and Mr. What was his name again? Mr. What was his name? Was Mr. Convincing. Mr. Convincing. <laughs> what a great, what a, he's an awesome guy. I hope we connect with him again. He's really cool. Yeah, no, he's on Smule. He goes by Empire Cat One. So it's Empire, Empire Cat One. Just, just, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link of one of his songs so you can follow him on there. Yeah, very cool. Very yeah, cool. you'll you'll love him. He's awesome, and I'll I'll send you that link so you have him and you can connect with him. And anybody who doesn't know, Smule is fun, and you should join us all. 
I'm inspired by Joey Alex or sure something is. LV. I don't remember. Something Las Vegas, baby. Alejandro underscore LVSD. There you go. You got it. Alejandro <laughs> underscore LVSD. <laughs> Sounds like a church in Las Vegas. Right. <laughs> that can be it. You're called you to never be the next preacher, brother. You never know. Hey. I love you. <laughs> love you too, girl. We'll talk Thank soon. Thank you okay? guys all for being here listening to us.